Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Shonen and Chill, hosted by Zenrado and Asaratha. Hello, I finally made it here after we've, we've <laughs> a while of waiting. Sorry, guys. We've made it. There was a lot of prep work that needed to be yeah. done. Um, yeah. Enjoy the fancy new background that I, I didn't want to recycle the old one because I, I didn't. I was thinking about <laughs> making the joke where it was the exact same as the old background, and I just MS Paint scribbled Oceans' name oh out God. and wrote yours over <laughs> top of it. Decided that would have been really funny, that. though, man. <laughs> Decided not to do that. Um, That's all right. I, pre I appreciate you not putting me next to Deku. That's very nice of you. I don't know what the <laughs> background is now, but I'm sure it's fire. It's, uh, it's the, you know, from the first Jujutsu Kaisen opening, the Kai Kai Katan, where it's like the map yeah. of Japan with like the red with squiggly yeah. lines going through it? That's what it is. Okay, cool. I, I was worried for a second you still put me next to Deku, because I feel like no. I'm going to be known as the MHA guy that replaced Ocean Man. <laughs> <laughs> so that just means for the next episode, I have to literally put your floating head over top of, like, Deku's you don't, body. You don't, you don't gotta do that. You don't gotta do that. <laughs> uh, I was thinking, I was thinking after you DM me to be on here, I was like, you know, the My Hero Academia fans that listen to this podcast are like, they're like, yeah, you know, we're gonna get somebody with some new ideas in here really revitalize the image of My Hero Academia on this podcast. And I can assure you that, well, generally it's going to get worse. Unfortunately, <laughs> though, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, these chapters have actually been good, so. Well, yeah, that's true. There you go. See? Yeah. <laughs> and we're not really talking about this week's chapters just in time for yeah, next yeah. week to go back to being ass. Yeah, don't so. worry, guys. You guys will get to hear all of the negative thoughts I have about current My Hero Academia, even though it's been good. <laughs> <laughs> par for the course really um, yeah. all right so i think our plan for today is we've got a new new host everybody knows me right like i'm just the rawness and swag merchant like <laughs> my, my manga taste is like hey cool themes idiot check this out domain expansion like that's all i give a shit about <laughs> so everybody knows me uh but we're, we're gonna get a little bit of introduction here to the new host we're gonna go through all of the series that he's been catching up on to prep for this uh, I already know a few of your thoughts on a lot of these, so I'm looking forward to talking about some of them. Yeah. Uh, um, I gotta say, there's a good contrast going here, because you say you're the Ronis and Swag guy. I think I'm almost the exact opposite. Not to, not that I don't enjoy some Ronis and Swag every now and again, but, like, uh, I think I, I ran my scores of these manga through, I just, like, just to find the average, and it came out to about a 5.7 out of 10, so... We're not working with some very good series in this magazine at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a perfect segue to uh, jump in and talk about uh, Fabricant 100. Now, now that I've said that this magazine is not working with some really good stories, Fabricant 100 is unironically my favorite magazine running in this, or sorry, my favorite series running in this magazine right now. I can get behind that. I think Fabricant 100 yeah. is very good. I've um, kind of, like, lost the initial, like, uh-oh, it's getting canceled next week. Panic? Yeah. Now that we've moved into, like, new stuff? Yeah, that last arc with uh, number one really felt like it was it. And, like, a lot of, like, the introduction of Fabricate 100's backstory made me really think, like, oh, shit, yeah, it's, yeah, it's well, Jover. Yeah, it's so Jover. <laughs> I was getting such bad Candy Flurry vibes when, like... Yeah. They're just fighting, and then the final boss is just like, I'm fucking yeah, here Yeah, dude, as soon as he showed up, I was like... Fuck! Yeah. It's really uh, over. Uh huh. <laughs> but no, um, Fabricate 100 has been really, really, really good, man. Um, I'm a really big sucker for themes of self-sacrifice. Uh, I mean, look at the guy in my profile picture. If you guys know, you know. Um, I think trying to find the line between self-sacrifice, but also you know, caring about yourself has been really important. And I think Fabricate has been setting that up pretty, pretty well. Um, really hoping that it dives into it more, uh, and I think it will, especially considering that this current arc has characters that are all, like, well, one of them is anti-self-sacrifice. I guess you could also include Fabricate 100, who has also been like, oh, you know, why do I care if anybody feels pain besides me? And I think the relationship between Ashibi and Fabricate 100 has been a, a pretty important crux of the series in that they really are polar opposites in pretty much every way, despite having this kind of it almost feels like it's supposed to be a really deranged like mother-son relationship you know what i mean mm -hmm. but like 
Uh, she stated that the only thing with her, with the, the power to heal her, is making other people suffer instead in this chapter. And that relationship grows like more and more extreme over time. And every now and again, you'll get some glimpse of humanity from Fabricate 100, but. Uh, and then she'll do some completely fucking deranged stuff that'll make Ashibi go like, man, it ain't easy. <laughs> <laughs> it, it ain't easy, man. It ain't easy out here at yeah. all. Uh, um, and, like, it's weird, because, like, you're supposed to, I, I feel like there is some intentional, like, mother-son parallel, like I said earlier, but you could, I feel like you could also almost parallel it to, like, a groomer and a victim relationship, you know what I mean? Yeah, I could see it. I yeah. mean, because the, the relationship is inherently toxic, because it's... yeah. I, I'm being nice to you with the understanding that I'm going to exploit you in the future. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, oh, another I, I thing. Another thing I really like about Fabric 100 is that it feels super aware that the character is literally 14. Yeah, which I, they, I feel like a series like they're they're I feel like we're moving into that more, where a lot more yeah. series are acknowledging like you're just a child. Like I know Naruto mm -hmm. did that, but it took a long time for Naruto <laughs> to do that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, for a while it was kind of, like, taboo because you're marketing this to 14-year-olds and no 14-year-old mm -hmm. wants to be told, sit back, you're 14, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, I think it's I think it's also reflected through the art style of Fabrica 100 and how Ashibi is drawn very small. And I think, I might be mixing up my series here, but I think it was said that he was kind of small at some point, but, like, he also does just look like a kid. Yeah. He actually looks younger than 14 to me. I was always under yeah. the impression he was, like, 10 or 11. Um, <laughs> yeah he's he's a little man um yeah no i think uh, and uh, i remember you and i talked about this when i was first catching up the the conclusion that ashibi came to that oh well i can like regenerate and shit and you know i can take i can get my ass kicked so like i should do that because that's what i can offer to these people right or that's how i that's my way of stopping fabricants and i think that's like a perfectly reasonable conclusion for a child to come to So, Fabricate 100. Fabricate 100 has got it. Um, I'm hoping for some more time with the sidecast, like this arc has been doing. And I am very excited to see the future of the self-sacrificial content. Uh, it's getting to the conclusion a lot faster, I feel like, than a series like ReZero did. Where it took, um, like, 16 volumes to get to it. Not to say that's a bad thing. Uh, I do think it's kind of a consequence of Fabricant at some point being under threat of Axe. Yeah, I, I feel like you kind of always are these days. I mean, yeah. I'm trying to think of the highest chapter number I know of of a cancelled series. I know the Kuroko's Basketball guy did a golfing manga that got cancelled at like 65. Damn, that is brutal, man. Yeah, that's late. Um, 65 is when like you really like you're really settling down, you know, with some of your ideas. Yeah, it was so abrupt, too, because it, it, it's in the middle of a tournament, and they're playing in the tournament, and then the next chapter comes up, and he's like, hey, I'm just going to go leave the tournament and play against my main rival guy, and then it just, he's just like, He's just like, you know what, man? I'm above this shit. I gotta, you know what? I, I don't got... need this. I don't need this anymore. Uh, all right. Well, Fabric 100, we got, see, we got positive reviews coming in early. That's Yeah. That's we'll see. I don't remember what the, I don't remember the order of the list I sent you, so I don't know if that's going to stay. <laughs> Oh wait, no, no. I I actually sent you the list from best to worst in my opinion. So. Oh, okay. So we're gonna we're gonna spiral out of control yeah. then as we get toward the bottom. <laughs> yeah. uh, so look look forward to that. Those of you who are watching this afterward, because now you can look at yeah. the timestamps <laughs> and you can guess where it's gonna go. So next up is Sakamoto Days. Oh, actually, to amend that statement, Marshall Master is not yet placed because it's too early. But other than that, that's accurate. Fair. Um. Sakamoto Days is a manga that, given my uh, starting preamble about me not being a meathead, I shouldn't really enjoy that much. But I don't know, man. Sakamoto Days, for some reason, I really couldn't put my finger on it. Has just got it. It's just, it's, it's like it's just got it, man. <laughs> it's it's so just good. got it. Like, I don't get frustrated when it's just people fighting for like a reason that I don't really care about. And I I feel like the story knows that it just wants to do cool shit, and I think that's awesome. But even then, it does have some like nice character moments every now and again, or some like night some nice messaging along the way, especially with Sakamoto and his family. Um, I don't know. I I really don't got anything negative to say about it. I I just sit down. Oh, you know what? I changed my mind. I do actually. Um, <laughs> I <laughs> I do think uh, the utilization of some of the side characters is kind of lacking. 
Um, in particular, I'm forgetting her name. Even though I I wrote like a big note about how she was getting screwed over. What was her name? Are you talking um, about the girl that joins the the? the oh, Lou. Girl? Lou. Yeah, yeah. Lou. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Oh yeah, I should have a disclaimer that I read all these in a very short period of time while I was at work. So if I, <laughs> if I forget somebody's name or like I miss some critical theme that you posted about in your 16 tweet thread, my bad. I'm working on it, right? Um, Baby steps. Yeah, Lou got, Lou's getting kind of fucked over like this whole manga, in my opinion. Yeah, they kind of had that like, uh, hey, the triad wants her back arc. And yeah. I haven't done anything since then. Yeah. And that's that's really like the only thing that's kind of rubbed me wrong about Sakamoto Days. Other than that, man, I don't go I don't go into Sakamoto Days thinking that I'm gonna dissect the themes. And I'm sure maybe there's some more that you could dissect than I probably have at this point. I just sit down, and like this chapter, I was just watching them fight, and I was like, "Yep, that's pretty cool, man." <laughs> yeah, well, I think like the fights in Sakamoto Days, it well, well, like you said, they kind of just want to make cool shit. That's kind of the point. Yeah. But I think in that, that quest to be like, I just want shit to be cool. Like, they always have really cool set pieces. Every fight yeah. is really creative. You don't read any fight and ever feel like, oh, I just saw this. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like, yeah, it, it no. It kind of averts that action spam boredom. Yeah, like, even in this this current fight, uh, when he, like, shot the dude's metal jaw and the bullet ricocheted to, like, hit the girl, I was like, holy shit, that's so cool. What the hell? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, it's, Sakamoto's always been really good at, like, theatrical set piece yeah. fighting. Like, it's framed almost like a movie a lot of the time. Yeah. Uh, we and I, all about it. It's probably my second favorite thing in Weekly Shonen Jump. Whether that be uh, a condemnation of the rest of the contents of this magazine, <laughs> I'll leave that up to interpretation. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's cool, though. I like it. I liked it way more than I was expecting to. All right, all right. I can get behind that. I'm a big Sakamoto guy myself. Okay. So next up, we got Blue Box. Blue Box is my third favorite thing in Weekly Shonen Jump, kind of by a technicality. It <laughs> okay. was it it was Yozakura family. And I'll get more into this later, though. So I'll, 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 just, I'll just put a pin in that one for now. Um, Blue Box is fun. Um... Like the beginning was cute as hell. Like I uh, and I, I personally really, really enjoyed the character art in this manga, um, and I do like the awareness of of Taiki. Right, he's always felt like a super aware. Like, oh, I don't want to like. I understand that she lives with me, due to her circumstances. So like, I don't want to be a fucking loser about that, and I don't want to put her in a position where she's really uncomfortable in the place that she's supposed to be comfortable. Right, and. Early on, I was like, oh, that's actually, that's really cool characterization. I, I quite enjoy that. I'm saying early on as if it changes. It doesn't, but uh, I really enjoyed that. Um, personally, I know a lot of people have a problem with love triangles. Uh, the early love triangle stuff, it didn't really bother me that much. Uh, I mean, it's, I feel like it just comes with the territory. And I, I felt the character interactions within that love triangle were like fine for literal 15 year olds. It was whatever. It didn't bother me that much. Um, and, like, even when Hina did confess to, uh, Taiki the first time, like, I felt like he established his boundaries pretty fairly, and there was that second attempt where she tried to, like, push it on him again, and he was like, hey, can you stop doing that? Like, I, I said no, and you need to get over that this is not healthy, and I thought that was really cool. Um, now, before, I think this was before the second rejection, uh, the school festival or culture festival arc, whatever, that shit did damage to me, dude. That sh- <laughs> the, the oops, did they kiss bit? Yeah, that was, oh my god, I was taking psychic damage like crazy during that read. <laughs> uh, I didn't like the contrived feeling of him having to play the prince. I really hated the did they kiss thing that you mentioned. Um, and I really, really didn't like that glasses wingman dude that I can't remember the name of started like gaslighting people do you remember that i remember i i, well, I don't really pay attention to the glasses wingman guy because he's just <laughs> like there to narrate what happened to someone else um yeah no i don't I remember what, he, what, what is he what was he doing he went to taiki and he like started gaslighting him into thinking oh maybe you do have feelings for hina 
And I, I was just reading that, and I was like, wow, what is happening to this manga? Like, what am I reading? And <laughs> like, I felt like a manga that felt really grounded in how characters interacted with each other felt like it decided to do, like, a Looney Tunes scenario. Like, it felt like it became a Looney Tunes cartoon. Yeah, I think I remember when we were talking about that before, where we were talking about how a a series that stays mostly pretty reasonable in how it handles, like, human yeah. emotion randomly was like, but let's throw in a bunch of tropes for just one arc yeah. really fast. Yeah, that was really weird, man. And I remember for a lot of that arc, I was just like, Taiki, you know you could just text her, right? And, like, I know you're 15, but I think even a 15-year-old would, would know this. You can just, like, shoot her a message real quick. He did do it eventually, and I was very happy about that. But that arc felt super contrived to me, and I really did not enjoy it. But the stuff after it has been fine. And then, obviously, post-confession has been fine as well. It's been good. So, uh, Blue Box uh, had a mixed period. And before the Culture Festival, I was also kind of not vibing with it anymore because it felt like a lot of dragging. Um, a lot of, I, I, from what I'm aware anyway, it seems a lot of sort of romance manga do that, where they don't want to get to the conclusion too fast, so we kind of like pussyfoot around and meander yeah, for a bit. Yeah, you kind of can't, uh, you can't push to the next step because that fundamentally <laughs> yeah. changes the formula that you're working with. So you yeah. kind of have to, to take your time, yeah. So, so I was kind of getting bored with that, and then the Culture Festival arc hit, and I was like, Blue Box don't got it no more, man. It's over. It's never been more over than it is right now. <laughs> And then that well, ended, and back. I was like, oh, we're sweet. So <laughs> sweet, we're back. We're so back right now. Yeah. I have a note here during the Culture Festival arc where I just wrote, the author of Blue Box has declared war on development. <laughs> 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 yes. Yeah, so that's where I was at with that, with the manga at that point. Yeah, no, that that's definitely the lowest point in Blue Box, yeah. for sure. I, no, no argument from me there, but... I do think it's bounced back very well, like the, the confession stuff, the all the post-confession stuff, where they're kind of trying to square, like, how do we yeah. have this relationship in the same house in, like, a not weird, creepy way, like, yeah, it's been, it's been good. I've been a fan. Yeah, it's been enjoyable. I've, I've quite enjoyed Blue Box so far. All right, well, then that puts us into the next one, which is going to be uh, Jujutsu Kaisen. Jujutsu Kaisen and I have a very strange relationship, okay? <laughs> very, uh, very complex. <laughs> it's complicated on Facebook. We, yeah, yes. we got that. It's complicated <laughs> shit going on right now, bro. Um, <laughs> so my experience with JJK is I start, or I started, I read the first few chapters and then the anime started. So I was like, fuck this. I'm just going to watch the anime because uh, this was back way before like I actually read manga a lot. Um, and... I watched the anime season one. I was like, yeah, this was a good time. I, I quite enjoyed it. I gave it like a 7 out of 10. And to people in the comments, I use an actual rating system where 5 means it's mediocre. 7 is good, okay? And then I read... Uh, oh, no, actually, I read JJK Zero first. I actually read JJK Zero before I read JJK. Uh, and I really like JJK Zero. And then the movie came out. And JJK Zero, the movie was fucking fantastic. I really enjoyed the, the movie. <clears throat> That was when, this this was after I actually read the manga, but I, the way I, re I read JJK prior to Shonen and Show was very strange. I would read it in like 15 chapter bursts. Okay. Um, yeah. Because I, I was never really good at keeping up weekly besides My Hero Academia, for better or for worse. Um, so, post-season 1 content, I thought was very good. Hidden Inventory and uh, Shibuya, obviously, like... Those are very good arcs, and I think very few people would disagree with that, hopefully, anyway. Um, where it got a little strange for me was... and I, I, I honestly wasn't as critical of the Zenin Massacre arc as a lot of other people were. I could see that it was... How do I put it? It, it was obviously a, a result of pretty bad working conditions for Gege. Um... It was very fast-paced. It was very rushed. It got what it wanted to do done at, I feel like, the expense of kind of telling that story. But it was f okay. <laughs> and obviously, everyone has probably seen the scratchy art that came by the end of that. And then they had to fix that for the volume release. Um, after that was Culling Games, correct? That's when Culling Games started? Yep. Okay. 
Um, now, you see, Colin Games and I have a very complicated relationship. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think the Yuji and uh, Higuruma, is that his name? Yeah, Higuruma. Yeah, I think that fight was f- spectacular. I thought probably still my favorite fight in the arc. And then I enjoyed the Yuta fight quite a bit. I, I really... Yuta is my son. Um... And then everything after that, I enjoyed parts of the Maki stuff as well in Colin Games, but everything after that, honestly, didn't didn't really grab me that much, so I was kind of mixed on Colin Games. Um, but then, after Colin Games, let me think, sorry, I'm just trying to keep all this shit straight in my head. There was the uh, Chozo and Yuki fight with, with Geto, um, mm-hmm. and I think Chozo's character moments for like wanting to atone with his life for having killed humans... And then, like, Yuki telling him to live as a human now. I thought that was great. And now, obviously, as the um, commander-in-chief of My Hero Academia on this podcast now, I do have to address the Yuki and Star and Stripe allegations. (laughs) 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 Uh, I mean, I see it. I do think that she's better than Star and Stripe. But, like, I get what people mean. How, yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's very similar. Yeah, it's, it's a strong yeah. lady character coming out of nowhere just to get boxed down by the, by the bad guy. Yeah, at, at, like, at least Yuki existed before that. And at least she had, like, at least some ties to our cast before that. So I don't think it was as egregious. And you know what? At least she put up a fight. <laughs> 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 at least there's no author note that says... I was literally just going to say that, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I was going to say, at least JJK didn't, like, give her, like, a potential thing to do, and then the author note go, yeah, never mind, I was just fucking with you. <laughs> that didn't happen. You <laughs> thought that she wasn't useless? Or uh, my, I think my primary issue with the set of JJK chapters I read for this podcast, which was, t- I read 26 chapters yesterday, it felt like a lot of the dialogue in very recent JJK doesn't feel like characters interacting. To me, personally, it felt like really heavy exposition dumping or like this was my plan and this was what I am doing and uh, it really bothered me with a lot of the dialogue I felt like it kind of uh, picked back up um, around like slightly before uh, Gojo gets gets out of the whack ass crystal prison and then a little bit after and now we're back to it with the TV screens but um, yeah it's especially bad with the TV screens Um, yeah and I don't know if it's because like he, he wants to push this fight because it's supposed to be obviously like the the guys mm-hmm. throwing hands mm-hmm. right now so he has to keep introducing these new concepts but then he's yeah. not willing to just do them without yeah. like having to explain them in the moment a lot of stuff with Jujutsu Kaisen in the past like we see curse technique reversal way before we really are told like oh yeah you can just yeah. do that shit you know <laughs> yeah. and so like to me that's fine there's probably people yeah. who are like, what the fuck is a reversal? Why why is he knocking people away? He's supposed to suck them in or whatever. I, whatever. But, like, I don't need to have the minutia of every aspect of what they're doing explained to me about how they can yeah. like, Oh, Gojo made his barrier itty-bitty this time. Fine. Whatever. That's enough I of can see that. I can see it. Can yeah. I can see fine. it's little. I don't need Higuruma to then be like, oh... This increases the density of the barrier by 2.68 cubic feet per meter. But if Shukun is, also does the same, his attack power will increase by 6.8 cubic feet per And it's like, I don't care, man. That's not yeah. what I'm here for. Yeah, that's felt, it's felt particularly egregious in that, I agree. Um, after the Yuki stuff, uh, was the uh, Megami sister Sumiki, is that her name? Yes. Okay, just making sure. Um, I did not like their reunion at all personally um and then the body snatching happens i did get a little bit of shigaraki ptsd but also she's definitely not (laughs) she's definitely not even close to shigaraki uh like i understand that what her role in the plot was uh my criticism is kind of similar to my my criticism towards star and stripe in that when you're when when you have a a a pretty obvious plot device you kind of want to masquerade it it's kind of like doing a magic trick you know like you don't want it to be apparently obvious how you did the magic trick and I think with Sumiki, the issue was that uh, it was very, very apparent what the purpose was. And I mean, I'm pretty sure Sakuna even like 
explicitly says what the purpose was. He literally, um, yeah, he says, this is why yeah. I'm doing this right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just, I would have liked, I don't know. I, I guess ultimately the plan was always for her to get body snatched and stuff like that. I, I feel like I would have preferred it to just go in a different direction, but at that point you're suggesting just altering a lot of the story, so I, I wasn't very fond of that. Um, and then I got to the chapter that everyone knows and loves where Megumi got, gets body snatched and an extremely hype set of events. Uh, I, d I thought the Yuji stuff in response to that was very good and I, I really enjoyed his fight with Sukuna and this is what I actually know this right here I think is when uh, characters felt like characters again for me with, with, with uh, Yuji and Maki fighting Sukuna it felt like the cast was actually like discussing things and having actual dialogue and I, I think JJK's cast is pretty good when they don't feel like walking exposition dumps like they did for the Culling Games and a little bit beyond um, I did find it funny when Sakuna like instantly gibbed Ryu, I think was his name, the guy with the funny hair, yeah, the silly the little hair, the... yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I remember uh, during Culling Games, people were like, people told me word for word to just like let the Culling Games cast cook, since I wanted more characterization in JJK, and just for Ryu to get like sliced instantaneously and killed. killed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I was like, damn, okay, well, there goes that. Uh, didn't really care about Sakuna versus Yorozu personally. Uh, just kind of happened. And then I felt Gojo's return was kind of anticlimactic. Um, but what is important is having the context that this and Iron Might happened in the same week. So <laughs> that was this is S tier fiction, if you really think about it. <laughs> yeah, well, with Gojo's return, I feel like it's hard to, to do anything justice yeah. after it's been like three years of yeah. people wanting nothing but that that when you finally the, get it like you know what are you gonna what are you yeah, gonna it's, do it's the know? nobara effect bro it's over <laughs> yeah well like nobara can't come back because if for whatever reason she actually is still alive people are gonna lose their mind in a bad way <laughs> that it's been so long i'm pretty sure she's just dead at this point because yeah what, what's she gonna do if she is still alive and she comes in after suka <laughs> Kills Gojo, she's, you know? No, dude, she's gonna fold Sakuna. She's been training off screen, bro. My Hero Academia <laughs> effect, trust, okay? She's gonna pull up with the eye patch and save Gojo <laughs> by killing Maharaga. Dude, that's gonna be fire. Um, yeah, but so, like Jujutsu Kaisen, I think even with when the calling games was going on, is mm -hmm. generally at its best when characters are getting opportunities to just kind of be themselves in the middle of action scenes. Like yeah. When Yuta is fighting in uh, Sendai, and he's, you're getting that insight in his head of like, I'm not gonna make Gojo kill his best friend for me again. I'm gonna do it yeah. this time. Yeah. Yeah. Like that kind of stuff, and stepping up and kind of like indulging Ryu's whole thing, where he's like, I don't particularly care about fighting, but I know that you do, and I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna give you what you want right here, you know. And so it, it kind of feels like everything's on pause right now, all like. No one yeah, else is that, allowed yeah. to be a character. Gojo and Sukuna have to hit each other, and everyone's yeah. just waiting until the thing is over before we can go back to contributing to yeah. the story. Everyone suddenly got their PhD in fucking in 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 curse energy analysis. Yeah, and which now is they're funny too, like, <laughs> everyone's like, there have been so many times where someone's like, "Oh my god, he did this," and someone's like, "That's impossible." He's like, no, it's not. <laughs> Oh, okay. He did, oh my god, I can't believe Gojo did that. He's like, how do you know he did that? Well, <laughs> wouldn't you like to know? I'm about to tell you how he did that for far too long, for far I'm too many pages. to break it down with a diagram. <laughs> um, yeah, it, I don't particularly hate the fight. I, I, I feel like the domain yeah, is kind of boring, but it's not egregious. There have been worse fights in Jujutsu Kaisen, that's for sure. I agree, yeah. The fight and is okay. And I, I, but I, I, I think that's what's kind of pissing so many people off about it is that Gojo and Sakuna is a fight that is just fine. You know what I mean? Yeah, it should be like the, the, yeah. the fight and it's like just okay. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Like I, I do think like if we weren't having every single uh, element of the fight over explained for entire volumes I swear to god this fight's gonna go on for like 17 volumes of pure explanation. Um, Gojo and Sakuna like finding ways to kind of like push the power system of JJK and like just find like little avenues that the other wouldn't expect because they're both so familiar with the system you know 
to yeah, like just try and run up each other. I think that's really cool. It to you <laughs> every time <laughs> yeah. they do it. Yeah. yeah, I think that's really neat. Um, I also think. I, I don't know why. I've seen a lot of people on Twitter say that, oh, this is like the final fight of JJK. I don't think that's true. Not, I not don't know I why you would... I think this fight ends within the next couple chapters. Yeah, I don't know why you would come to that conclusion. So, like, I, I, I see people who are like, oh, Yuji is not getting to do anything in this final arc. I'm like, it's not over, dude. Like, Yeah, th there's like... no... Absolutely no way that this is the final fight. Um, <clears throat> unless yeah. he literally is like, fuck it, I hate this series. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> uh, there's no way this is the final fight. There's so much stuff going on. And I think a lot of the, the my issues with this Gojo versus Sukuna like arc basically because that's all that's happened, um, yeah. is that they so Gojo comes back and Gojo's yeah. like okay, let's fight on Christmas or whatever, and everyone's like oh, okay, we're gonna <laughs> yeah, fight just... in a month from now. And then it just cuts to it, right? And then it just cuts to it <laughs> because it's not even the oh, first yeah. time they've done that because in the very beginning. We get that sort of deadline of, like, Halloween yeah. is when we're going to do our fucking plan. And then we get a bunch of shit between then and Halloween. So, like, had we taken that time of just that month... Because Gojo even says, like, I have stuff that I have to do yeah. <laughs> before we fight. And I'm like, oh, okay, we're going to, you know, we're going to learn some stuff. We're going to see some... And then the very next chapter, he's like, I learned my shit. <laughs> I'm yeah, here. He's gonna... Didn't he, like... He killed, like, the higher-ups off screen, right? I, I, I don't think it shows who did that. Um, I I think that it's uh, alluded that either it was Kenjaku or Gojo or okay. old man Gakuganji's. It's never said explicitly who did it. Okay, okay. But they're dead. Yeah. Yeah, off screen. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, we see one frame of their bloody bodies by their, their yeah. things. Yeah, little, while go yeah the, the the clan the the higher ups are getting massacred while Gojo is like paying off his fucking credit cards. <laughs> He's like, I can't fight you right now, Sakuna. I really gotta pay the water bill and I gotta make sure that my car don't get towed. It's been there yeah, for a while, so <laughs> I've been in that box for a minute. So I, gotta, <laughs> I gotta get my finances straight. <clears throat> yeah, uh, yeah. JJK, very mixed place for me right now. Um, hoping that, hoping that we get some of that hidden inventory in uh, Shibuya level content again yeah need, need that energy to return because that's yeah. uh about as peak as it gets for yeah for shit that's some of my favorite manga arcs in general uh it's yeah so shibuya's pretty damn good man it is it is peak peak quality if you've been watching season two of hidden inventory anime pretty good i have not watched it yet i'm waiting to get a few i'm waiting for it to get a few episodes in so that i don't feel blue bold you know that's fair that's fair it, yeah. it's it definitely has that effect of the the one episode at a time. You're like, damn, yeah. <laughs> I don't want one episode at a time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's a shame that Shibuya will never reach the heights of My Hero Academia's final work, but, you know, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'll, I'll put a pin in that until we get to the <laughs> <AJ> section. Uh, <laughs> so then next we've got uh, Yozakura family. Yozakura? God damn it. Um, so this manga was actually, I really enjoyed this manga. Um, this was my third favorite. Blue Box was not there. Uh, Blue, like I said, Blue Box is there by technicality. Um, <clears throat> I went into Yozaku with kind of low expectations, but, uh, it surpassed them pretty, pretty damn well. Um, so my primary issue with Yozakura family right now is I think the time skip is really, 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 really bad. I don't think there's a single thing I like about it. I, 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 I find that our entire cast has just been fucked over entirely for the sake of two children that I don't care about. And we skipped over every single piece of development between um, Tayo and Mutsumi uh, for no particular reason, it feels like. <clears throat> uh, if we're comparing like Spy Family and Yazakura Family in terms of glacially slow relationship development... Uh, Spy Family might come out on top now at this point. So, there's really... The relationship progresses at first. Um, and then it just sort of stops. But the, the main story of Yozakura with, you know, like the Yozakura blood and like the, the ancestors and stuff really takes over. And I, I was really enjoying it. Because I thought it wasn't just going to skip five years. So, I thought we would get back to the things that I wanted to see. And then we just don't. And then he's got children, <laughs> and everyone's gone, but they come back, and they seem exactly the same. But, oh my god, look at Tayo's kids, they're so cute. 
Uh, and my least favorite thing in Weekly Shonen Jump right now is the stupid fucking like siscon or like brother con shit. Yes. Oh my god, I'm so <laughs> sick. Of so it. bad. So sick of it. And Yuzakura family did it again. They made a second one. That's what I don't get. Was because uh, Kiwichiro kind of seemed to be. They were like not doing that joke as much. He still yes. did it sometimes, but when he first shows up, that's his whole character. Is like his yeah. only contribution to the entire story is like, I don't want you to fuck my sister. Like that's it. <laughs> yes, um, literally, man. Literally, that's all he does. And then they end up kind of moving away from that, and they kind of let him yeah, develop into cool, sort of man. like the almost the big good of the family, yeah. right? Um, and then we get the time skip, and not only has he seemingly reverted back yes. into being only a freak. Which is uh, his like his entire reason for going away was because he was supposed to go five years without Mutsumi, and he comes back worse. Yeah, much worse than he was the whole time. Yeah. Uh, and then now we have the sister, who's also just as weird. Like. Yeah. So, um, pre time skip, I was very excited to have a. I felt like it's been a while since a big Taiyo character moment, you know, and he is pretty much only, t almost only taken L's throughout the series. So when it came time the time skip happened and that he just like like i said he developed off screen the relationship developed off screen they had a family off screen everything happened off screen and now the protagonists are two kids that i really really don't care about and if anything actively dislike reading about and the characters that i wanted to see are gone <laughs> and then when they when they show up they don't have anything to do really no they have just become parents like they don't they just say they just talk about their kids and then they go away again. Yeah, like which and it's weird because you know, you have like all of the siblings coming back and sort of like coming out and doing their all their shit and being yeah. like, oh, we we went away for five years training and now we're back. Yeah. Uh, we're back from our training and all this shit going on, and then like they're not any different. Yeah. <laughs> It's, yeah, that's another thing. Yeah, like, that's, that's like they're like, oh, we we learned our new techniques. We've learned like our special new abilities or whatever, and then they start doing it, and it's just the same shit they were doing before. But I then we just have characters I'm... saying, oh wow, they're better now. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, man. Everything I feel like I enjoyed about Yuzakura family, it feels like it's gone. Yeah, it's it's tough. I I, I still enjoy it, uh, and I think a lot of that is like I'm enjoying seeing them come back because i'm like i like you you're back yeah, now yeah Thank God. No, I, but before this i would have i would have said that yuzakura has the best cast in weekly shonen jump and maybe it's still true i don't know um i don't think about that more but currently i'm upset <laughs> yeah and it just feels weird to because they set up the big bad and like the he's gonna try to kill us for our blood or whatever yeah yeah and so we have to train to get stronger than him that that is our goal and yeah. then they switch casts they're like, okay, yeah. and now we're not part of it anymore, and now these little kids are going to do it. Yeah. And it's how, not how even like they're adding the, the little kids to the cast of the main family, because now the little kids are getting their own secondary backup friends to be yeah. the main cast. <laughs> how do you feel about the kids as, like, replacing the protagonist, basically? Uh, I don't particularly care for the kids. Um, <laughs> yeah. Alpha just kind of reminds me of Tayo, but, like, Smart. Yeah, like there's yeah. not. He, he's just like a good boy, and yeah. his his character flaws that sometimes um, he's a bad boy. Actually, yeah, he's a bad boy sometimes. Then how uh -huh. fucking yeah, which you? is how like what you? what even? But um, I actually like the sister more than him, despite her being a freak. Um, Honestly, you know what? I think I could see it. Yeah, I see the vision for that. Just because, like, I kind of like like one they established that she's a fucking weirdo, but then when um, yeah. Futaba comes in, she's yeah. kind of like learns a little bit about growing into her own value outside yeah. of just being a freak all the yeah, time. I, I I would say now that I think about it, I think she does have more like character flaws that make her interesting than Alpha. Yeah, because Alpha's whole thing is just like he's the best at everything, and all of his problems are because the sister keeps fucking him over by being a freak. He's the best at everything, but he's got a demon inside of him. Yeah, he, he can be your angle or your devil <laughs> yeah. at any time. Uh, which is dumb, because his, his evil alter ego is literally called Bad Bro, Alpha. he's four years old! <laughs> <I don't... laughs> 
It's not that deep, man. He's yeah, what what have you been old. through in life at four that you develop yeah, an right. evil alter ego? Like a Tokyo <laughs> ghoul fucking... You got the, the fucking Kaneki mask at four, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> Is this what happens when you have a, a brother con on your side like that, man? Is this that trauma? <laughs> Uh, uh yeah dude i don't know uh it's something i it was definitely better before like i think that last arc where the dad kind of finally dies and like gives them yeah. their mission was so good it was really good so i was good. really and then now I was we're just, like, hard in an undersea school where no one goes to class we're in an undersea school where I don't give a shit about anything that's happening, and like <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't care about the protagonist anymore, and the cast feels like flanderized or the same or regressed. Like it's especially bad with uh, the two that just came back, Shion and Kengo. They're exactly yeah. the same character. Yeah, they're exactly they, the same character, and I think they the don't even just, look different. The like, author just wanted to put... at least looks different. Yeah, the author just wanted to put Shion's fucking knockers out more. I guess that's really yeah. All it put her in a in a puffy <laughs> coat to like yeah, which perfectly is, frame uh, her ridiculous fucking her yeah, bangers. I didn't didn't understand what was going on there personally, but okay. <laughs> I, it's just I don't know. I I hope that when we get through this dumb like, you have to go meet all of my siblings to see their power ups, yeah. even though their power ups are just that they're the same yeah, thing. See. It's like, I don't know if the author realizes, but I am not the four-year-old in the manga. I don't need to meet these characters. Like, I've met them. Right, I've already met them, you know? So it's if, weird. If, and when they come like, back... I'm actually they, they a good person. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I yeah, was they with come you back, for like 200 chapters. They come back and they're not meaningfully changed. So I'm just, I'm just reintroduced to a character I already know. And I'm also not four years old. So like, yeah, it's not... Like, it's not it, yeah, that's a good point. Is that like, you could do something like this if they were different. Yeah. But they're not different. Now, the only one that might seem different is Nano, because the whole thing where he doesn't want to see the family now for some reason, which we don't really know the reason yet. But Yes, that's fair. That, there could that, be something. There's so injury. we might be... We, yeah, we might be going one for six, which is impressive. But, uh, like, the, the Kyoichiro thing, where it's just like, oh, man, he's... The little girl's a freak, just like him. Not funny. <laughs> oh, my God, um, dude. He's so old. The Futaba God, stuff was okay. Yeah, um, I, it, was, it was fine. Because again, like the little girl getting all shitty that like Alpha likes yeah. her. But again, why did Alpha like fall in love with her? What is it with this arc <laughs> and like family romance shit? God damn it, man! Why can't I he just be like, know. "Oh my god, you're cool. I like you." Why did it have to be like because Jesus, it's because you're a beautiful angel? It's because Futaba became more of a character than his actual mom. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, Which is and, also it sounds something very that... negative. Um, I, I'm not in love with where it is right now. It is really good up to this point. So yes, it, I would still recommend reading it because pre time skip is very good. Very good. Yeah, I, it, oh, man. I, and I I'm was really, I was really wishing ready, for right? a flashback arc where we go through the time <laughs> skip. Yeah, yeah. Give me that. Uh... Isn't that something that like uh, I haven't ra watched or read Bleach, but didn't Bleach end very abruptly, and then there was like a novel after that kind of. Included everything that the sort of, oh, sort Kubo, of. One of yeah, the, yeah. Uh, the Bleach just ends with like a lot of stuff left unsaid, and then there's yeah. several novels where like it kind of gets fleshed out. Like there are some characters that you don't even know if they lived or not, oh. because they're in battles and they're like bloody on the ground, oh. <laughs> and then <laughs> it like ends. it just ends. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, some of that stuff later, like you find out that basically everyone lives because it's a Bleach and nobody really dies in Bleach, um, but everyone <laughs> lives. I say that as a massive Bleach fan. People don't die in Bleach. Spoilers, man. What the hell? You can get your fucking <laughs> arms ripped off and your heart cut out, and you'll be all right in a week. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they, they sort of did that. I, I don't know. Just like, who went to this author and was like, hey, you know what your series needs? Uh, weird kindergartners. <laughs> you don't have enough hey. weird kindergartners. Hey, they're preschoolers, man. All right. That's uh, fair. They are preschoolers. Well, no, I think they're they're officially in school now, right? Didn't they get out of? Is yeah, it preschool they starting... to school? Well, preschool, at least in where I am, is just like daycare, basically. I never went to preschool, bro. I didn't. We either. couldn't afford that shit. But preschool <laughs> here is basically just like a daycare center where you just do nothing. Um, but I, I thought they were enrolling in the proper academy because, of course, because they're the Yozakura kids, they can, of course, at yeah. four years old. 
beat up adult men. No problem. Yeah. Well, have you ever thought that maybe they have the preschool academy? <laughs> <laughs> Any preschool academy that lets Koichiro be the principal <laughs> has fucking problems. Well, he's Yozakura, though, so it's <laughs> cool and good. You know who I miss? I miss his friend that would just call him out on being a freak all the time. Yeah. I, that I like that guy. I'm, assume, I'm assuming he'll come back at some point. I hope so. That, that was he was dude. good. I love yeah. anyone who, who looks at the freak characters and they're like, you gotta stop being a fucking freak. Nobody yeah, it just, it just sucks when, like, the gag is, that, like, oh, you should stop, haha. <laughs> but it's like, no, you really should, though. Like, it's yeah, really bad. It, yeah, when the gag is like, you're weird, but, like, it's not a joke. You're fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. They need you to stop. Yeah, I like it more when, I don't know, I like it when, especially Japanese media, has, like, those Japanese fiction tropes, like, uh, I don't know, pedophilia or, <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, like, syscon or brocon shit. And it doesn't use it as a gag, but instead, like, it actually goes, yeah, that's weird, man. You should not do that shit. I don't like that. And, but see, it always ends the same way, though, where they won't, like, commit to, like, hey, that's weird, you should stop. Yeah. And the character's like, oh, okay, I'll stop. It's always like, haha, you're a fucking weirdo. Anyway, yeah, yeah. And they just continue. Yeah, I, I quite enjoy it when anime or manga ends up critiquing, like, really common tropes or, like, otaku culture tropes. Uh, a lot of it, a lot of it is unfortunately just very toothless. And Yozakura is probably a part of that. Yeah. Pretty much. I feel right, bad because like I, I really I really did I really did enjoy this manga for the most it part. Is, yeah, it is really good. Just this this bit uh, kind of sucks, but that's yeah. enough ranting and raving about the crimes of children. Uh, God, children. All right, so next up, we've got uh, Tenmaku Cinema. Um, the start of this manga was cool. I I really enjoyed the start of this manga at least. Um, I I really like media that just kind of gushes about media i guess i really i like art that gushes about art and how the connections between people with art and stuff and how people feel about art and i think tenmaku was really good at that at first um not to say that it's bad now it's just not doing it anymore i feel like tenmaku is just not doing anything right now uh yeah, except for kind of <laughs> yeah. where it's been for a bit it feels like yeah, uh, the only thing that Tenmaku is doing is showing the process of making a movie with not much substance, and then showing a 14-year-old in a bikini as the color page. Yes, frequently. <laughs> like, yes. They, they're always like, uh, oh, let's make a movie. Okay, I, I have, like, like, a big hero moment in Tenmaku is, like, when he takes the janitor cart to do a tracking <laughs> shot, you know? Yeah. Um, and Which they're like, cool. yeah, cool, like, I don't also, dislike anyway, it, here's yeah. this child's boobs. <laughs> They really oh, like God. putting her in like costumes. God damn it! I hate manga and anime so much. Dude. It's <laughs> fucking unreal. I'm not even like super violently against like because at least no, they're like no, oh we're because yeah. you know it's not like My Hero Academia where he's like hey did you ever wonder what the invisible woman looks like here's her cooch it's like um, <laughs> like she's playing a beach scene in a movie and they're yeah. kids and he clearly yeah. like is supposed to be crushing on her. So yeah. seeing her in costume for a beach scene is like fine, but it feels like the more and more that we go into this, <laughs> the less and less it becomes about like making the yeah. movie, and the more and more it becomes about like isn't this girl cute? <laughs> like yeah, yeah, I cut yeah, I agree with that actually. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's felt very stagnant, um, and I feel like the thing I was enjoying it for, which is the beauty of art is kind of taking a backseat now, which is very unfortunate. Yeah, because, like, you know, you have that, that mini arc with the uh, with her, like, boss, who's an asshole. Um, yeah. That is, is one of those arcs in anything like this that is inherently stakesless because, like, he's not yeah. going to make her not do it because then you don't have a story. Yeah. So he's got to let her do it, you know? And I kind of <laughs> thought that that, that was going to go back to sort of like a this is... The, the beauty of having passion for your craft. But it mm -hmm. was mostly just kind of like, hey, let's keep making the movie. <laughs> All right, <laughs> sure. Like, okay. Yeah, sure. Let's <laughs> keep doing the plot that we've been doing. It just didn't, it didn't really uh, hit me. I Let's... always compare anything, and this is, this is I'm going to break a million of hearts right here. I always compare any story like this to Act Age. Because mm. until the author was like, actually, I'm a fucking freak which is apparently a huge problem <laughs> everywhere, both character-wise and author-wise. 
Um, yeah, it's weird, man. <laughs> yeah, Japan might have some stuff they need to work out. Yeah. Um, before that all happened, that series was very palpable with like, and a kind of Banashi kind of does it too. Um, with like, what pursuing this craft means to people, right? Yeah. Like, Act Age and Akane are both very big on this is what I want to do, this is why I want to do it, and this is why it matters to me that I'm good at it. And mm-hmm. Act Age also had a lot of that where, like, because she didn't really know how to act normally, and obviously this is, like, anime playing it up. Like, this is not how it actually yeah. happens in real life. But because she's, like, a method actor or whatever, where she, like, the only way she can act was to emotionally put herself in that position, but it kind of fucked with her because, like, there's only so many times you can imagine your parent being murdered and shit in front of you, yeah. like, actually, before it starts fucking with you. Um, I thought that was, like, a neat take on it. And it was almost kind of a self-sacrificial angle of, like, I want to be good at what I do, and I'm willing to put myself through hell to do it. Yeah. And this kind of started that way with, like, the ghost who is literally, like, I'm so passionate about my art yeah. being seen that I literally can't go to hell yet, right? Yeah. And yeah. now it's just, like, these kids are cute doing cute stuff. Yeah, Dang it's it kind of lost it for me. Maybe maybe it's because I'm not 14 years old, unfortunately, uh, that I can't really connect to this manga, but Maybe, because, yeah, you know, it, Blue Box, is, as whack as it sounds, kind of raised the bar for, like, manga romance for me. I agree, so yeah, So now, yeah. when you're going to have two 14-year-olds just kind of play Will They, Won't They, like, I'm going to see her, her boobies, and it's going to make me blush. <laughs> um, I just don't care, really. You know? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's whatever. It's, it's fine. I know a lot of people really like Tenmaku Cinema, and I don't hate it. Um, no, I don't hate it by I, any means. I think no. it's fine. It's just, just waiting for it, more. It's one of those, yeah, it's one of those ones that started out really great and has kind of faded into becoming a little bit more tropey. Um, I know it's not doing very well sales wise. I hate to, I hate to wave the axe every time I, I like give a younger series a pass for its failures because <laughs> I'm always <laughs> like they're probably afraid and they're doing their best, and I hate to do that. But it does kind of feel that they were like. Hey, nobody gives a shit about movies. Uh, maybe you should just have the kids be fucking cute. Did you think about that? And he's like, "Well, I don't want to lose my job, so <laughs> I'll just make the kids be cute." Because um, yeah. they saw Nui's Exorcist is for some reason doing numbers. Uh, and <laughs> honestly, I wonder if the current direction of Tenmaku is a response to reader surveys. Maybe people weren't responding too well to the initial kind of appreciation of art angle, and people wanted maybe. To I mean, kind of an Ashi still does it. Yeah. I guess I don't know. I don't know, man. Maybe yeah, Tenmaku really is weird. No. <laughs> yeah, but you know, and and it could very well be that he doesn't want to lose his job, or it could very well be that sometimes you just luck into something really good, and you don't know why you made yeah. it good to begin with. And yeah, so, maybe. yeah, you never know. But speaking of perfect segue into Akane Banashi. Yeah, yeah Akane Banashi is doing what Tenmaku was doing at the start, but better. Um. Now I think my hot, I think this might be my hottest weekly show to jump take besides my hero academia probably uh, is that Akane Banashi is fine. Um, I like I mentioned earlier I do like the appreciation of art stuff, uh, especially in this recent chapter. I really like the recent chapter actually. It's my top three probably. Um, my issue with Akane Banashi is I never really feel invested in what Akane is doing personally, and I think I remember talking to you about this where you said that some of the side cast feels more more in depth or more interesting to follow than Akane. And I'm like, yeah, actually that's kinda of, the more I read, I was like, yeah, actually that's that's kind of true. Um and I noticed while I was binging Akane that the f- the formula of Akane is usually this. Akane doesn't know how to do something. So then a teacher informs her of how to improve that in like the most esoteric way possible like she has to find a fucking the back of a milk carton in like the philippines and then she <laughs> understands it and then once she <laughs> once she then understands she gets it to grow yeah yeah the chapter ends with her walking on stage with like a dramatic like over the shoulder or like front on shot and it just sort of ends and i think this arc currently has the potential to shake that up um I liked this most recent chapter a lot. Uh, I I agreed with your assessment that um, it kind of seemed like Akane might actually lose this because she picked a song that might not be important to the people around her, but it's one that's important to her. And <clears throat> um, I think this was a great way to twist that 
and for Akane to come to the conclusion that her dad's weakness and genuine connection to his art and characters w- was what she enjoyed for Rakugo. Um, my complaints about her basically winning everything and never really feeling invested in if she will win or not might still stand. Because I wouldn't be surprised if it is if, if this narrative goes, oh, is she going to win? Oh, she might not win. Just kidding. Isn't that really inspiring? Yeah, and it tends to do a lot. A lot of like her issues that she was having earlier were never like, "Oh, you're actually like not that good at this." It was always kind of like, <laughs> "Oh, you don't like office politics and stuff like that." You know, like <laughs> yeah. a lot of her roadblocks were just like, "Hey, you're kind of being a bitch to this old guy," and I get it. He's a he's a dick, but he's got all the office power. He's got too so much you gotta power, be nice. bro. Yeah, basically, and so like, I like. Uh, what's her? Hikaru? Is that the girl? The voice actor? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I like her whole thing about, like, I want to show you that I'm better than you doing it my way. Like, yeah. I'm introducing my own take on this that is normally not traditionally appropriate. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Because that's kind of how any art evolves, right? Is you have yeah, yeah. these guidelines and standards that people work from, and then you have someone willing to push against them that elevates it into something different. Mm-hmm. Uh, and with Akane... It always kind of just felt like borderline child savant stuff. Like, oh, I, I've i just been doing this since I was a baby, so I'm actually super rad at it all the time. Yeah. Uh, and it's nice to see, like, a professional actress come in and do this and do it in a way that makes sense from, like, a a personal standpoint, both for her own character and just for mm-hmm. kind of the way the world works. Mm-hmm. And for it to kind of push Akane's whole just like, I'm my dad's girl thing that she's got going yeah. on. Yeah, um, yeah. And I, I like like you mentioned, yeah, I like it when, when art talks about like stuff like that. So that's, when Akane Banashi is doing that stuff, I think it's quite interesting. Um, but when Akane is just like winning everything, and then, like you said, every critique of her is just like, oh, you don't get like the hierarchy here or like the, the social dynamics. I'm yeah, like, okay. like you're not nice enough to the people who can give you your career. Like, yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter. Because I think like Hikaru is really great, and I think the I'll never remember his name because he's so forgettable. <laughs> other than this stuff, but the the businessman, <laughs> the who, businessman, the old businessman who becomes a Rakugoka instead, uh, because he just wasn't fulfilled doing his shitty Wait. nine to five job. What um, the fuck? Do I remember the, who is this? The guy like, who what? like uh, was losing points because he was adding in funny ad libs that the audience liked but the judge hated because it wasn't traditional or whatever oh oh yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. like i like him a lot because that's a good like the backstory of just being like i had a shitty dead-end job and what makes me happy is making people laugh and i don't give a shit if i lose a competition as long as i'm on stage having fun and the audience is having fun watching that's so real man that's so real love that yeah. And it, it, the side characters always seem to sort of steal Akane's shine because Akane's shine has always just sort of been like, she's good at it. <laughs> she's just yeah. good at the thing. And I was hoping that her choosing her dad's song would mean that like she would have, she might have to realize that she kind of has to like find her own identity, you know what I mean? That's still but where I, I'm hopeful I, that it goes. Yeah, at the end of the day, like technically though, her own identity can also include like her father's inspiration. I don't think those two things are mutually exclusive. So that's why I kind of I liked this chapter because I do think that was a, a neat interpretation of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think you and I are pretty aligned on what we hope for the future of yes. Akane Banashi. So it seems seems to be the case. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we'll we'll hop over into Kill Blue. This manga always seems like one bad page turn away from sending <laughs> the author to prison. <laughs> <laughs> But then it do- it doesn't though, which is cool. Um, but I, I always feel like feels I'm like they the do line. it on purpose because yeah, I always feel like I'm walking a tight line, dude. <laughs> they set up like, uh oh, you're a forty year old man and you're gonna have to marry an eighth grader, and it's like, what the fuck? And then the next chapter begins with them being like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah, the next like, chapter is like, are you fucking insane? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I'm not doing that. Yeah, it's you're like... a sick man. You're a sick bastard. <laughs> but they always like set it up. To be yeah. like, uh oh, he's gonna, you're there gonna was, have to do this weird thing. Yeah, there was that one chapter where like it almost kind of felt like it was alluding to, oh, does he actually have feelings for Nora? And then he was like, no. I kind of just see her as like, you know, she kind of reminds me of my daughter. Yeah, she she reminds me yeah. of like a surrogate daughter, and it's like, okay. Yeah. But yeah, you're they, they constantly set up the uh oh, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> we're getting a little risque, and then it's, he's like, no, no, we're not fucking doing that. Um, I think this manga is fun. Uh, I don't, it's nothing too, like, serious for me yet. I think it's enjoyable. I really like the aspect of the dude, like, getting de-aged and it not being used. Like, this, this is a critique, I think, uh, to follow up our previous topic during Yuzakuru, uh, this is a critique of, like, Japanese fiction tropes, I think, in that there's a lot of anime out there, um, Mishoku Tensei being one of them, where, uh, somebody gets reincarnated or, like, brought into a younger body, and they feel like, oh, I can, I can be a pedophile now or like be a freak now yeah it's um, my second chance to be a fucking weirdo yeah. yeah it's my chance to be a fucking piece of shit loser uh but the spin for kill blue is that oh this is my second chance to like develop a life and like actually learn at school and have fun and make connections because i'm not killing people anymore right and and the ultimate goal isn't like uh I'm going to live my life over again. It's I yeah. need to get my adult body back <laughs> like yeah. right now. Uh, uh, so I think it's fun, man. Um, I really, I think the, the main character finding like all this joy with actual learning and schoolwork is very endearing. I think it's a very nice series. Yeah, uh, the I, pacifier I shit I, is annoying. I'm of course uh, biased because this is the author of Kuroko's Basketball, which I love mm -hmm. deeply. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I, I I was always gonna like this. Uh, there's definitely some stuff I don't like. Again, the pacifier dude. What the pacifier, fuck is that? Pacifier. Yeah, come on, bro. Like, uh, <laughs> the joke was not funny in the chapter it debuted in, and now he's a recurring character making that but unfunny it's not, joke. It's not funny when you gotta throw the pacifier into his mouth during a fucking sports game, buddy. It's not it's, not having a good time. None of it's funny. Yeah, none of it's funny. Um, but most of it, I I really like. I like the uh, the aspect of him just kind of being an adult in a kid's body and understanding what that means <laughs> that like yeah. he has a responsibility in the way that he behaves um yeah. i like I, I love the childlike wonder with like oh my god learning shit rules i never had any time yeah to do that, that was really awesome because man. i've really been like an that. adult like my whole life so getting to experience like certain aspects of being a kid uh is awesome and i yeah. sort of like that instead of it always being treated as like Haha, ha, I was a, you know, I did this as my profession when I was an adult, so I'm amazing. Like, he, he has some of that, but a, a lot yeah. more of it comes from him sort of, like, just knowing that the uh, borderline, like, uh, it reminds me of Nanami in Jujutsu Kaisen, where he's like, just, you might be mature <laughs> for a kid, but you don't understand, like, certain miserable aspects of being an adult person yeah because yeah. you haven't lived through them and it's not like oh you haven't been to college or oh you're you haven't checked off your life milestones yeah. it's like the little things like the the misery of the store you always go to stops carrying the shit that you like and now mm -hmm. that little tiny joy that you have is gone and you need to that's just gone forever and you can't do anything about it like little miseries like that that come with being an adult that he kind of uses to be like I gotta make sure that these kids are making not shitty decisions. You know? Yeah. There was uh, one scene in particular that stood out to me a while ago. Uh, it was when Ogami said, like, the most misogynistic shit possible, and, like, it wasn't played off as a joke. And, like, the like the person around him was like, dude, what the fuck? Are you serious? Like, <laughs> Yeah, all the people were like, you, that's not... <laughs> it yeah. wasn't his, you... like, side, his little sidekick guy was like, you gotta, yeah. uh, you gotta like, modernize you a little bit, man. <laughs> You best be careful with that shit in school, bro. They ain't playing. Yeah, people ain't gonna <laughs> want to hang out with you with that shit at all. <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel like Kill Blue has been a very good critique on a lot of popular, very cancerous anime tropes. All right, let me check the list here. We're, we're flying through the list. We're down now. We're at uh, Ichinose Family. Man, <laughs> I got no fucking clue what's going on anymore, bro. Yeah, I mean, I'm like kinda... I. I, I, I I have, like, a vague through line, but, like, I'm kind of checked out. <laughs> yeah, me too, because, like, the the endless mystery is almost having the opposite effect of what I think he wanted for me. Because, like, at first I was like, damn, this is crazy. What's going on? And yeah. then it kept going, and I was like, damn, this is crazy. You'll What's never, going on? And now I'm like, never what the fuck is going on? <laughs> like, you'll never expect the plot twist of the plot twist of the yeah, cliffhanger for the plot twist of the new character motivation. You'll never expect the plot twist no fucking idea what's happening. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm kind of lost. I, I like mystery stories, but I like to... I'm not one of those people who's like, a mystery story sucks if you can't figure out the mystery yourself. No, by the man, end. Like, I shut agree. up. That's yeah, stupid. Yeah. But, like, I mean, 
everything yeah. this story teaches us it decides is not true like a few chapters later yeah uh like re-zero is my favorite story of all time that shit is mystery galore the further you get into it and i'm not near i'm nowhere i'm actually not confused at all <laughs> but like it you know say it just feels like confusion and mystery for the sake of confusion and mystery yeah it um, never feels like they're me they're like reaching a meaningful yeah. conclusion to any of the mysteries because every time you're like oh i think i like i get it oh th this he did it he figured it out then like something happens and he's like oh actually i'm nine layers deep in the in dream hell Bro, like i don't this was this this manga is what people made fun of m night Shyamalan for in like the late 2000s <laughs> it is though <laughs> yeah. like uh the bit where the the the, the fake dad I was like, this is yeah. weird and cool, and I want to know what's going on. And then, <laughs> yeah, like, oh, I was it's that. my long-lost brother. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, no, I was kind of hooked in still during the dad stuff, and now, dude, I don't know anymore. Um, yeah, I'm so checked out. Uh, it, I, it's one of the last things that I click to read every week. Yes, uh, when it comes yeah. Through. Uh, I read the chapter. I, I look through the chapter and I'm like, that that was the chapter of Ichinose Family's Deadly Sins, man. Yeah, I, I don't read them in order that they like release in on the app. I go through the ones that I care about and I just click through yeah. them one at a time. Um this is always one of the last ones I get to now. It <laughs> it's just it's even though it's always doing new things, it still feels like it's spinning its wheels constantly. Uh yeah. It's like the opposite of Mashal, where Mashal was like, We're not fucking doing anything. We're just punching guys. <laughs> only oh yeah should we talk about mashal too hey if you want to talk about mashal i'm all for it because i don't really want to talk about each family anymore. i mean i mean i don't got much to say about mashal i don't know about you but i feel like you know since the podcast wasn't really running during its yeah, finale the, yeah okay let's 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 uh throw a special in there the mashal right, conclusion yeah. yeah let's do it all right uh mashal was a manga of all time it one of the manga ever made yes uh unremarkable protagonist unremarkable cast extremely unfunny and i will likely never think about the series again it, after this it podcast. started off really bad and i was like this is gonna be dumb <laughs> yeah then for a little bit i was like oh yeah. shit this is kind of um, so sick the, actually yeah i was liking like the divine visionary exam arc stuff that was fun yeah like uh, the, another the another whole... manga with syscon <laughs> well yeah that i don't know i don't know uh but it does seem popular these days um, I it it started off shitty. It got like pretty neat, and I was like, "Damn, this is cool!" And it seemed to have a really good grasp of like how to do the cool character entrance. Like that, it, it lived yeah, it, and breathed it, it, off that shit, man. The yeah. last minute badass character appearance was like Mashal's bread and butter. And yeah. then the author released that statement and said, "Like, hey, Mashal's gonna end really soon. Um, thank you for reading it. It's meant a lot to me." We're nearing the end. And then we get that weird couple days that go by, and then he's like, actually, just kidding. <laughs> so I feel like someone at Shonen Jump was like, brother, we're about to lose Black Clover, My Hero, Jujutsu Kaisen, and uh, something fucking else. You better get in there and <laughs> start writing. <laughs> and he was like, well, shit. Okay, I guess Mashal's not over yet. And then it spent like 30 chapters of Goku in the healing pod on Namek. <laughs> of like uh shit we're yeah. getting we're getting rocks by frieza man where are you yeah um yeah. which the the ending of mashal hasn't earned the goodwill that goku going super saiyan has earned <laughs> so boy was that ending lackluster and i just don't care and how do you have like this ultimate that <laughs> he did the pain thing <laughs> from naruto where mashal was like hey bro uh you've been a dick but you don't have to be a dick forever He's yeah. like, you're right. Revive everyone. <laughs> so, like, a lot of people, and this will be especially relevant for My Hero Academia shortly, a lot of people talk about Takano Jutsu, and I actually don't think that Takano Jutsu is nearly as big of a deal as people make it out to be. That is definitely, like, some bullshit, though. Like, that's <laughs> okay, actually... because Takano Jutsu gets memed on because Naruto does it a lot, but, like, when Naruto yeah. does it, he's doing it from a place of mutual understanding with someone. Yeah. Like, when he's talking to Gara, he's talking to Gara from a place of shared pain. When he's talking to Pain, he's talking to him from a place of being the student of Jiraiya who went down a very different life path. It's mm -hmm. Pain seeing what he could have been, right? Like, it, it's an emotionally impactful event. In Mashal, he was literally just like, assholes don't have to always be assholes. <laughs> and he was like, damn, man. I didn't damn, that's about deep, like that. brother. You're right. Revive <laughs> all the world. 
Damn, when you put it that way, man. That's crazy, yeah. It's... All right, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, you're right. I've been a dick. My God. It reminds me of that clip from Ant-Man when uh, his daughter oh, yeah. was like, you don't have to be a dick. And so he just turns good. <laughs> and then he fucking dies screaming, I'm not a dick. Like, that's that's the end of Bashel. Yeah, pretty much. It's just, um... it's not good. It was not good. I, I really felt like it started to find its footing there in the middle section of the manga, but then it tripped and fell. Yeah, well, because it started off being purely jokes. Like, it was basically One yeah. Punch Man for a little bit. Um, yeah, I was really not having fun with it. <laughs> no. And then it sort of, like, started finding the right way to balance being a shonen mm-hmm. with comedy, as opposed mm-hmm. to trying to, like, pick and choose which it was. Because it was doing that weird thing for a while where it was, like, either a gag series or we had, like, a sudden shonen fight. Like, out of nowhere. Yeah. That had to be taken seriously. Um, and it started kind of figuring it out. Like, especially with MASH, where he could be having a serious, intense shonen yeah, battle. Yeah, dude. And then you could get, like, normal. chibi MASH in a panel, and it didn't feel weird. Yeah. Like... I, 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 a specific example I can point to is, like, in the, I think it might have been even the final or final two chapters... It really used his okay thing like a lot. Yes, um, yeah. which normally is a, a good thing, I think, because I think Mash is like stone face, like that's kind of dumb, like response yeah. to someone being a big shonen tropey villain, even yeah. in what is supposed to be a serious fight, is is a good use of that. Um, mm-hmm. But it almost kind of came back around to to. This is a problem, I'm, I'm segueing a little bit, but this is a problem that I also have with One Punch Man, where mm. it started just becoming the thing it was making fun of. Oh. And so, Mashal does it too, where, like, Mashal for a long time is like, ha these silly tropes. And then it starts doing them, and so then it becomes less of, like, Mashal's making fun of the industry tropes, and more that just, like, Mashal's making fun of itself, because mm. this is what it's doing now. Uh, yeah. and it, it and it kind of and not that you can't make fun of yourself in a in a story that's like you totally can but when it's all that you do and your entire punchline just becomes isn't this premise fucking silly then it starts honestly, to be like how do i keep caring honestly man now that i think about it i feel like a lot of stories end up unintentionally doing that not every story a lot of stories can keep the criticism or like making fun of tropes keep going for a while but i feel like a lot of stories that exist to almost feel like they exist to make fun of those tropes end up doing the same thing yeah and it's i don't think that manga is a great format for a series designed solely to to pick at tropes because the whole point of a serialized manga is that it doesn't really like end you know i mean obviously they end eventually but they want to be like carrying on to the end like you, a series like Naruto, it's like 700 chapters long, could never have yeah. been just about satirizing tropes without <laughs> yeah. inevitably doing them themselves. And like One Punch Man does it really bad now, where like the whole point of it was like there was serious shit going on, and then Saitama would show up and save the day in a silly way because it was anime is silly. But then it got to the point where like you would go 80 chapters between Saitama's appearances because they want you to take it seriously and they want it to be a narrative story as well. Yeah. Uh, like. Picking at tropes is good for, like, one-shots. It's good for short little yeah. things. But I think the longer you go, the more you inevitably hit that point of, like, I don't have a choice yeah. but to I engage think, in these yeah. tropes. Because I'm still a manga at the end of the day. Like, I can't yeah. not no, use I think, the tropes I, of the format. I think there's got to be, like, some more permanent spin on tropes. Like, um, for Rezio, for example, uh, it kind of makes fun of Isekai at large by critiquing the power fantasy like wish fulfillment escapist shit because Subaru as a character when he first gets isekai he's like oh shit i'm an isekai protagonist i'm gonna do some badass shit and all he does all he does is get his ass beat continuously and that's (laughs) that's sort of something that never changes he is never really strong he's always getting his ass beat because his power is to die that's all he can do is die um and i feel like that's a way stronger critique because they never drop it like I'm I'm 33, 34 volumes in. He's still getting his ass beat, bro. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's definitely a better way to do it. Yeah. If you're gonna if you're gonna critique it, you gotta commit. Yeah. But I think it's hard to commit with a story like Mashal, where it's a battle series exclusively. That's like all they do, mm-hmm. and your main character is trying to be like the I'm gonna turn the rules of the world on its head. But if the entire story that you have is about the rules of the world not being okay, 
but also your storytelling medium is like this world is silly and stupid <laughs> that it becomes <laughs> yeah. like I, how much am i supposed yeah. to care about you reforming harry potter society like i don't know oh, yeah mashal sure was a story that happened it yeah, exists I heard in it was, my I, memory banks, and I will I remember heard it from time to time. <laughs> I heard it was supposed to be a critique of Harry Potter, or like a, a parody of Harry Potter, rather. Some I remember I posted in my media thread on Twitter saying that, Mashal, I will never think about this story again. And somebody responded, was like, oh man, I thought you would enjoy it, because it's like it's like a parody of Harry Potter. I was like, dude, I've never seen Harry Potter. So like, it, it <laughs> so just, it doesn't it mean just shit to me. It just kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Oh lordy! Well, there you go, Mashal fans who are hoping for a tearful yeah. goodbye. Uh, sorry, <laughs> you got Mashal fans in here, bro. I'll close at least five. Okay, uh, speaking of shit, uh, next up is Do Retry. <laughs> Man, so like, I think this manga is bad, but it's like funny. You know what I mean? Like, I don't. Oh, not recently, honestly. But like, at at, at the at the start, it was funny, and well, now it's... I think the problem with Do Retry is that uh, it doesn't want to be funny. <laughs> Yeah, it's trying really hard to be serious, but like at the start, I was finding it really funny. Like, co- dude, Coom Hammer for real? Like, seriously? The Coom Hammer is one of my favorite things in any uh, manga oh, God, of all time ever, <laughs> because they play it so straight. Look at yeah. this dude's fucking huge he... ass arm. That's <laughs> it. That's his whole thing. Is the homie has a giant arm, and they dude. play it so seriously. Like I'm really just supposed to look at that and not find that fucking hysterical. It, yeah, and like every time he gets hit by it, they're like, "Oh my god, the Warhammer!" And I'm like, "Shut the fuck <laughs> up, dude." <laughs> but now I feel like now the uh, Hammer's a good guy, and like I've seen him a lot. He's not funny anymore. So now the series isn't funny anymore to me personally. <laughs> yeah, he's lost. Like he he should not have been. He should have just been like a random character that shows up from time to time. Uh, dude, Coom Hammer should have been the final boss, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that would have meant the manga was over, which should have happened probably. Oh yeah, fair, fair. But like, I mean, like you should have, you should have heard like murmurs of 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 the the Coom Hammer, and like you should have <laughs> seen him. Like, imagine like set the scene. It's it's a boxing event, right? And then everyone goes, "Oh my god, look, it's him! He's exiting the building!" And then the protagonist looks, but he's like shaded because he's leaving the room, and all you can see is the outline of his thick arm the and that's your first of his giant arm. <laughs> All you can see is the silhouette of his big ass arm. <laughs> oh, that would have been, been fire. fire. This whole series is just <laughs> stupid. I don't, I don't know what to say about it because I don't like anything about it. Um, I, I like <laughs> yeah. the original premise. I'll say that. I thought that like, oh yeah, shit, this I is agree. a World War II orphan trying to save his sister, and so he has to get in with like the yakuza to do it. Uh, and then yeah. they, they were just like, hey, you want to look at these, like, they look like Punch-Out characters that he's got to just fight, like cartoons now. Yeah. Uh, it's just, it's very weird. It started off literally with like, oh man, America really fucked up Japan in World <laughs> War II, that's crazy. <laughs> and now he's fighting like fucking Pepe Le Pew and shit, his, like what's happening? His, like, he's fighting his like dad's fucking comrade in the war and shit, like what? Yeah, how in did a, we, in how a did fucking we get boxing here? ring, yeah, how did we get, what's happening, man? Uh, I don't know. My this shit my sucks. note, my note for this chapter this week was simply I felt nothing and that was it. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, I <laughs> I, I, I open I, do a retry and New Age Exorcist are two series that I forget uh, are in it, and I'm like ah oh, shit uh, I have to read those, and I very quickly do. I'm not gonna lie to you. I do uh, look forward to reading New Age Exorcist because I love to hate so. <laughs> <laughs> The hate fuels me. Uh, hate well, me. we have one more thing that we need to talk about before we could talk about New Age Exorcist, which is uh, My Hero Academia. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what do you want me to start, man? Like, <laughs> hey, bu- buddy, you do you. This is your episode. You do you. Okay. Um, for those that are unfamiliar, I got my start as uh, an anime YouTuber. Derogatory, by the way, uh, because of My Hero Academia. Um, it used to be my top one. Uh, I watched seasons one through three, and I really enjoyed it, and I thought it was a cool spin on a lot of shonen tropes. Haha, <laughs> funny how we were talking about how series that make fun of shonen tropes end up doing shonen tropes anyway. Um, and after I watched the anime, I started reading the manga, and I started watching Ocean Man's videos. And that really got me further in depth into My Hero Academia. And I was caught up by the time um, 
Endeavor Agency was coming out. And so I started shitposting on Twitter. I gained a following because at the time, My Hero Academia was getting shit on from all sides for, I still think to this day, uh, pretty lame reasons. Um, and I became known as the guy who talks about My Hero Academia and likes it, unfortunately. Because then Act 3 came <laughs> what out. What a cross to bear. <laughs> what a cross to bear, man. Um, yeah, and then Villain Hunt happened. <laughs> and then everything changed. <laughs> so... Uh, the end of the Paranormal Liberation War arc was when I was first posting some critiques on my hero academia. It wasn't anything big. I was like, oh, the Miri return was kind of ass. But, like, you know, I still fuck with stuff that's going on. Um, and it seemed at the time the community at large was like, yeah, Miri's return was kind of ass. So I didn't really get any blowback for that. Uh, villain Hunt is where things really went wrong. So I was a Villain Hunt fan for quite some time. I think it's 25, 27 chapters, something like that. Uh, I was having a good time because I thought there was going to be a lot more. And then Villain Hunt just sort of ended. And I was kind of forced to look back at the arc as a whole and reevaluate how I felt about it. Um, and the fandom at large really, really, really did not like that I didn't like Villain Hunt that much. They really, really, really didn't like it. Uh, I'm talking people that I thought I was friends with ended up breaking mutuals and blocking me on Twitter. Um... Like, I have fallen out of contact with people because I didn't like Villain Hunt. I didn't know it was that deep, but apparently it was. Uh, basically, Villain Hunt in Act 3 of MHA at large kind of feels like a very, very large disconnect about, or from the very character-driven status of My Hero Academia. It felt like a massive increase in pacing, it felt like a massive uh, uh, decrease in good stuff, and, and then <laughs> Star and Strife happened. And this was kind of really where I was labeled as a My Hero Academia hater, because Star and Stripe happened, and it, one, canonized the movies, which are dog shit, and I've always thought they were dog shit, even when I loved MHA. And then, um, Shikaraki's body jacking, Star and Stripe sucked, the traitor arc came by, uh, Aoyama was dog shit, Deku's characterization was dog shit, Class A's characterization was dog shit, everything that I thought I liked about My Hero Academia stopped existing. Um... The final war arc of My Hero Academia, I can't say is the worst thing I've ever read now because New Age Exorcist is out, but it's close. <laughs> um, I think in my media thread on my reread that I did on stream, I think I rated the final war arc uh, 2.5 out of 10, something like that. Very, very few redeeming qualities for me. Um, in terms of the final war arc, I enjoyed the Endeavor versus All for One stuff. Um, let me think. Hang on. Uh, um, wait, I know there's something else. Oh my god, I think it's gone. I enjoyed the Endeavor versus All for One stuff, mo only for Endeavor. Oh, Shoto versus Dobby was good. Uh, the second version of it was not so good, but whatever. And I like the Togo and Ochako plotline. Everything else I think is really bad. The massive amount of contrivances that started to get this arc going, terrible. Uh, Shinso, like, literally had to get a quirk buff that wasn't feasible with how his quirk worked just to get the fight started. Uh, it required dumbing down all for one dramatically. And then almost every single fight that's ongoing, I really don't care about. Um, and all the characters that I thought I cared about, I don't care about anymore. Like Deku is nothing. Hawks uh, kind of showed up to the fight, got his ass beat, lost his quirk, and that's it. Which was really fucking bad, by the way. Um, I have so many thoughts that are fucking rotating through my head so fast right now. Oh, the racism plotline is single-handled. That is the worst thing I've ever read. On a scale of 1 to 10, it would be a 0, even though it's not <laughs> on the scale. Uh, All for One is one of the worst villains, probably. Uh, I haven't read as much Shonen as you guys probably have, but I, I, I think it's safe to say he's probably the worst villain in Shonen. Um, Shigaraki has been mostly missing in action for three years. And... Bakugo's revival, terrible. Everything about this arc almost is terrible. Yeah, I, I, don't, record, I don't care that much about it. Um, <laughs> this final arc is sort of... So I really liked My Hero up through um, like the overhaul stuff. Like, yeah. through all that. I thought it was really good. Um, it feels like... and The man's tired, and you can tell he's tired. Yeah, yeah. And... 
I don't want to make that an excuse for why it just yes. seems like he's just yes. bolting through stuff because at some level you got to consider it, but also like it's still your story and you're still telling it. Yeah. Uh, but like I I remember like the detail and the emotion that went into like Mirio losing his quirk. Mm-hmm. And then the total lack of fanfare of him just being like, oh yeah, Aerie gave it back to me off screen <laughs> when I was when you weren't around. Yeah. Um. His defining character moment being like, I'm going to clap my cheeks in Shigaraki's face. Stupid. Um, but that's in line with Night Eye's vision. I, hearing people <laughs> say that had me dying. Just imagining Night Eye fucking bleeding out on that hospital bed. And the last thing he sees is Mirio shoving his ass into the ultimate evil's face. Yeah, he was just like, I got to tell him something else. I got to tell him he did a good job. <laughs> wow, he fucking died. <laughs> This man died watching his beloved protege twerk in the face of Satan. Like, I, I'm I'm not gonna assume that like this is a My Hero Academia fandom exclusive thing, but My Hero Academia fans will never shut the fuck up about the idea of, oh, it makes sense, so it's good. I think that's a manga fan thing in general. Yeah. Or like, yeah. Honestly, I think it's just an anything thing because you see it with like the Flash movie too, where you'll be like, <laughs> hey, this sucks. And someone will be like, um, okay, but it's consistent and it, it makes sense and it's what the author wanted. And the, it's like, okay, but it still sucks. <laughs> like, you Yeah, know, so like, it Mirio sense, shaking his ass, dude. Yeah, Mirio shaking his ass, uh, could it be interpreted to be in line with um, Night Eye's vision? Sure. Is that a good thing? No. What if he just made him do something else? Like, yeah, <laughs> it's not a real life. You gotta remember, this is a fictional story being made up by a person. Horikoshi's, yeah. like, Night Eye is not sitting there like, no, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Fix it. <laughs> like, it, this is the man's writing it, you know? Yeah. And so that's why it's so frustrating watching certain characters get handled in My Hero, because, like, the Ochako Toga stuff is amazing. It's great. Yes. It's It's been set up for a long time. It's got a fantastic conclusion where <laughs> Ochako has kind of learned that, like, because, you know, that, that first time where they fought and... Toga kind of reached her hand out and was like, you know, I, I want someone to be there for me. And Ochako was like, you don't deserve that because you're a bad person. Yeah, yeah. And that really kind of shut Toga down. And Ochako yeah. learned from that of being like, this is not, it's not in line with the type of person that I want to be. Because I want to be a hero that saves people regardless yeah. of what that means. Yeah, I feel uh, like um, for My Hero Academia, I feel this very strongly. That Horikoshi had a lot of good, like good scenes in his head. You know what I mean? Like, like I feel like this chapter in particular was one of those scenes that was in his head, and then he had to work backwards from there. And to, fuck, to, he yeah, cannot to do get that. There, yeah. yeah, he cannot do that. Yeah, and and you can kind of I, I don't know if this is like if this tracks at all, but you can tell the plot lines that matter a lot to him and the character interactions yeah. that matter a lot to him because like obviously Uraka Toga's one, uh, mm -hmm. the the Shoto family. The, the Todoroki mm -hmm. family obviously is a big one. And then you have like Deku Shigaraki, which is the main two people who are both like the protégés of basically mm -hmm. like God and Satan. And yeah. they don't fucking interact or really give a shit about each other at all. Yeah, no. Uh, I think a lot of people haven't really realized yet that Deku and Shigaraki's entire dynamic is heavily carried by parallels. Yeah, the, all they have is that they are the Generation Xerox of the people that came yeah. before who actually have an interaction with each other. And what what's really crazy when you think about it is that they also really parallel each other, and then the fact that they haven't been characters for almost three years. That too. <laughs> Not <Yeah>. helpful. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then, you know, it kind of hurt at the end of, like, Villain Hunt to see interactions that used to matter, like Deku and All Might, mm -hmm. that they, their interactions used to be a big deal. And then, you know, they get in that fight. And Deku's like, yeah. I don't need you anymore, and I'm yeah. leaving. Uh, and that is resolved by him just being like, sorry. And All Might being like, it's all right. No, you know what's it. weird? No, you know, no, no, no. You know what's even weirder than that, dude? I think you misremembered it because you want to know why? All Might apologizes to Deku. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I did not realize that. I legitimately <laughs> thought Deku said sorry first. Uh, no, uh, that's even worse. All Might apologizes, and then Deku is like, "It's okay. It's because that you weren't there that I was killing myself." <laughs> Which is weird too, because in that arc, Bakugo was the one who was like, yeah. "They should not be alone together because they have the same personality yeah. flaw." Which is they'll they'll work themselves to death if they think it's the right thing to do. God, dude. Oh, I have so many things to say about that. It's so frustrating how. <laughs> 
because um a lot of people want to because villain hunt didn't dive into deku's character a lot of people want to dumb down deku and say that oh yeah actually all of his self-sacrificial tendencies were not born of any environmental factors he was just born that way all because of villain hunt even though like my hero academia has been a huge huge proponent of the importance of environment and how people turn out I don't even really know how you could make a, an argument for predestination in my hero when, like, the whole like like how do you look at the Todoroki plotline and be like, Dobby's born evil, bro? Like, how do you look at Shigaraki, man? How do you look at Toga? Yeah. I don't know how you can look at any character in this and be like, that's just how that's just who they are, man. Yeah, that's and I, like. I think I think a lot of MHA fans have lost the plot and like they argue against people who are saying the villains were born bad, which is true. But in a further attempt to defend the series, they'll say that the heroes were born good, which is fucking stupid <laughs> don't they pretty much say that's not the case when bakugo gets kidnapped and yeah. they're like there's there's I mean, a lot of situations where he like had he been in a different place at a different time and like existed yeah. around different people he would have like just done it but and, no, you know, i guess he's just a good boy at heart so he didn't do it and, like what yeah and you know endeavor i don't know maybe that's important <laughs> man i don't know anyway my, my hero is just like i don't want to rag on it too hard even though it probably deserves it um it's just like <laughs> There are so many really good things in this that clearly, like, he, he hasn't, like, lost it. Because, like, the Uraraka stuff, some of the best shit he's done in years, maybe. Um, yeah. But it's just, it, it just hurts getting from point A to point B because every time you get one of these chapters like this, I just know we're going to swap over to some bullshit I don't care about. We're going to go to Iron Might, bro. It's going to yeah, be fire. Yeah, we're going to go watch All Might <laughs> fight in his Iron Man car suit against God, for one man. who looks like julius caesar or whatever and I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah okay uh but for positivity on my hero academia the togo no chocolate plot line was handled excellently um i really liked the imagery of like the twisted meaty fleshy toga going to stab child ochako uh it was very reminiscent of the exhibition heart art that hori did in 2020 or something uh which makes me more believe that this was an idea he had in his head for a very long time um and uh a startling amount of My Hero Academia fans are extremely pro death penalty. I've I've realized. Yes, it's crazy, isn't it? Like, dude, I remember having that conversation where it was like, man, it's really fucked up that Hawks just like extra judicially murdered twice and didn't really do anything to try to stop that from yeah. happening. Um, and everyone was like, twice was gonna execute millions, and I was like, I mean that that seems one that seems very bold. Um, to think that he was gonna kill millions of people in the, the small area that he was in, very bold. Two. Part of the problem is not really that, like, in the moment, Hawks killed him, but more that, like, he didn't yeah. do anything to avert yes. that moment. Yes, so, he never He never did anything to really try to actively get twice yeah. away from that situation. I I used to kind of have a similar take a while ago, where that Hawks killing twice was the correct decision. But I fa what I failed to do was take a step back and look at the broader picture, was that in that situation, yes, that was correct. But what I was missing is that Hawks created that situation. Yeah, reaching with. that situation was Hawks' fault. Yeah. Whether or not you think it's correct that he killed him there, which I, I think there's a good argument for. I have yeah. no other option. This is like the guy with the nuclear bomb. Yeah, I, I have no other bomb. option, but also I did this. <laughs> but yeah, you created the situation where you lost all of your options. And so like, yeah. I don't know how much I'm supposed to care about you. And it's so weird seeing you know, Toga and Uraraka. First of all, people are acting like this somehow redeems Toga, which it does not. It's, I don't know why. I, I don't really know why don't. they're acting that way. It's not presented that way at all, that this is some redemption of Toga. Like, oh, she's returned to the light side or some shit. Yeah. Uh, but, like, it's so weird seeing so many people be like, oh, what shitty writing. Uraraka's being nice to it. I saw someone on Twitter say she's killed millions of people. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck are you? She's killed, like, four people, maybe. Which... Murder is yeah. bad, yes. Yeah. But like, do you really need um, to play up how awful she is in order to justify I, like wanting her dead? I'm not gonna say all of the criticism falls under this category, because that would be very unfair. But I do think some of it. I think if you swap these two characters to be men, a lot of these criticisms wouldn't be there. Well, I think that's fair, and, and we're gonna get some shit for that because everyone always <laughs> hates the the sex in discussion. But um, yeah, it doesn't happen really with Dobby that much. Yeah. You know which. I think for Dobby, it's kind of more valid because Dobby was a lot more of like an axe crazy, like I'll just fucking yeah. kill you than Toga ever really was. Yeah. Uh, not that Toga hasn't killed people, she has, but Dobby <laughs> was a lot was very gung ho about it. Very like mm -hmm. uh, I'll just fucking burn you to death. Like I don't give a shit. 
Um, but like someone that someone that like immediately popped into mind about like who was very like integral to like love and themes of that kind of relation and stuff was Yuta. And people yeah. think he's the goat. Yeah. That that's fair. And you know, Yuta and he's the goat. <laughs> he is. But you know, how how much do you hold Yuta responsible for Rika like torturing people and shit, you know? Like yeah. there there's a whole discussion to be had there too, but at the end of the day, it's weird to see people kind of empathizing so heavily with like Dobby and not to say that he's not empathetic because I think that no yeah yeah his story is very empathetic I think there's a lot that you could there's a lot personally I pulled from that story that I think you can yeah. get but to see people give him so much rope and then with mm -hmm. Toga be like oh that's crazy Uraka should have fucking cut her throat with the knife while yeah. like, <laughs> like what are you talking about I, I don't know it's crazy but there's def and you know I think Shigaraki kind of gets uh, ubu babyified too he a does lot yeah yeah to yeah that's true it's because he's raw. <laughs> he is raw. But like a lot of people would be like, oh, you know, Shigaraki never had a chance. He was, he was, uh, you know, all he, his family was mean. And it's like, what, why does that not apply to Toga? Like, yeah, Toga's parents were fucked, man. Yeah, Toga's whole life was basically like, you don't fit into what we expect of you. And that's yeah. your fault. Yeah. And, and that sucks. And like that, especially for a little kid. Yeah. To spend their and, whole like, life hearing that like you suck and you're awful and you're a problem. Like, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that like a lot of people just switch their brain off when Ochako is on screen. Like every time like the leaks are dropping and I see Ochako mention Midoriya's name, I just it's over. It's fucking Jover. Oh, yeah, I know what the reception true. is gonna be. Yeah, and I almost can't tell if a lot of the criticism of Toga comes from the fact that Uraraka is the one who concluded her character arc, because everyone yeah, has to convince themselves that Uraraka only exists for the purposes of of like future fucking Deku. Like she's Deku's yeah. uh, future incubator for their Dude, inevitable born yeah. child. Like, like appar uh, apparently Ochako is the only one in My Hero Academia attached to Deku's hip. Like, please ignore Bakugo. Yeah, well that, and that's because Bakugo's <laughs> yeah. way more attached to him. Yeah, it's, way it's more. It's super weird. And, like, everyone kind of points to, oh, she admitted that she loves him, therefore all of her character is, like, ruined now? But it's like, no. Oh, that's, like, people can love each other, man. With how you feel as a person is, like, not... Yeah, that's not weird. There's a wrong and a right way to write romance, and I'm not about to say Horiko Horikoshi is a great romantic oh, writer. Uh, yeah, absolutely. No. <laughs> but someone coming to terms with the fact that they have an emotional feeling for another person is not like, uh oh, yeah. feminism alarm! Like, shut up, idiot! Yeah, like, yeah. For some for some reason, people like really just fucking shit their pants as soon as Ochako says anything about Deku. Even dude. Bakugo was having gay thoughts when he got fucking punched in the heart and killed. Like, come on. <laughs> Bakugo was looking a little sus when he got his heart exploded. <laughs> yeah, like, come on, man. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's weird, but I thought the most recent stuff was really good. Some of the yes. best. Stuff, I thought the reasons, the conclusion of Toga stuff was actually better than the Todoroki conclusion, which is crazy. I know. I, really like I, I, I agree, and I think it's unfortunate because I'm pretty sure the Todoroki stuff is getting just shoved into like an epilogue. Probably, yeah. I, yeah. I I don't think we'll see too much more of it. Uh, it, it had very final vibes at yeah. the end there. Um, it was fine. It wasn't bad. It was it was alright. Yeah, it was fine. All right, Let, let's. Oh, we were on that one for a hot <laughs> minute. All right. So next up, we have uh, the the fucking bell of the ball, our champion here, uh, New Age Exorcist. <clears throat> this is the biggest piece of dog shit I've ever read. <laughs> I want to point out that when he sent me his list earlier today, that's the very first thing that he said. Before he sent me the list, he said, by the way, New Age Exorcist is the biggest piece of dog shit I've ever read. And then he sent the list. <laughs> um, I don't like it either. Um, I think it's just awful. Um, yep. The main character is not likable in any capacity. No, nope. um, he I literally exists the main as well a self -insert. He literally exists as a self-insert because I'm pretty sure the author wants to fuck all these kids. I, I, yeah, I mean, kind of. Like, I don't, I don't <laughs> yeah. want to necessarily say that, but also, <laughs> he definitely exists for the purpose of like, you know, there's 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 that genre of media that's like, hey, are you a weird, lonely loser dude? Yeah. Um, have you ever considered that that's every woman you've ever talked to's <laughs> fault? Look at this loser weirdo. He has yeah. all these hot girls just flocking onto him. Wouldn't that be awesome? Shouldn't you want to paste your brain into this guy? <laughs> um, he is completely irrelevant. Like, nothing yep. that he does is interesting in any way. Yeah, uh, this... The most recent chapter is literally a oh my God, episode, yeah. and it's chapter I was gonna 10. Say, I was going to say this chapter, fucking 
horrendous. He he literally has like a oh no, I touched titties moment in it. Oh my god, um, man. It's so bad. And like almost everything about the story, except for I would argue I actually kind of like Nue as a character. Um I think the rest of it's just fucking dumb. Like, Nui yep. is super strong for seemingly Dude. no reason. We haven't really explained you, why she's just, like, even when sealed, she's stronger than everyone. You know, it's, like, you, I I think they introduce a new woman every two chapters. They do, yeah. The, yeah. They introduce a new cute girl to accidentally, yeah. like, give this guy panty shots every other chapter. <laughs> um, Nui is at least endearing. Like, I like that she's really good at video games because she's just fucking bored. So she just plays, like, board games and card games yeah. and video games and shit all the time because she has nothing else to do. I think that's kind of an endearing character trait for, like, yeah. to have for your superpower character. Because if you a lot of times when you have a character that's, like, larger than life, you know, mm -hmm. kind of like Gojo All Might, um, mm -hmm. you run the risk of them being kind of boring. Mm -hmm. And I think Gojo and All Might avert that by being kind of very whimsical, silly characters. They both mm -hmm. kind of have the most unrealistic personalities of their characters cast yeah. for most of it to kind of bypass that like if they were just normal dudes they'd be boring as shit um, <laughs> yeah. and Nui kind of reverts that by just being relatable sort of like mm -hmm. I have nothing That's to do fair. so That's I have fair. a bunch of stupid fucking hobbies like I, I kind of like that That's uh, fair, yeah. and that is where my praise of this ends <laughs> there is nothing yeah. else good about this anywhere I don't even yeah, like you... the art very much <laughs> you know what's crazy man is that this is top 30 on manga plus right now that's the, 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 like, I, I don't know if you follow these accounts, but I follow like the Shonen accounts that go through like, oh, here's the ter the table of contents for this week. Yeah, stuff. yeah, I see them. Um, and it's, it's crazy getting higher, isn't that it? This, it's getting higher and it always ranks well. And then all the good shit, like Fabricate 100 is like fucking like Jack from the Titanic clinging yeah. to that door. Gone to, the, gone to the head, bro. Yeah. And then this, this horse shit is like, oh, who's my sweet little man? Like, oh, and. That is sort of maybe like the sign that I'm too old for this shit now. <laughs> like, it's not I don't for know, me anymore. Dude. I, I, uh, <laughs> it's weird because I don't like, know I how can... you could possibly like this other than just being like, you're I'm so too horny, young dude. to look at porn. So, so this so is how horny, I man. get my porn, right? You like, got like if you like this manga, you've got to relax, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, I. This is an open challenge, and I will not make fun of you in the comments. I promise. <laughs> if you like this. I, I will I will even remove comments that make fun of you if you yeah because there people yeah. will make fun of you so I will remove those comments. Write if a comment that names five teams, with... bro. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to reply. I want you to reply to this and just explain to me what you like about it. Um, and I'm completely open to hearing it because I will say I I can't find anything in here that makes me want to keep coming back for more. If if your reason for liking it is that you are horny, then you know what, dude. At least you're honest. I respect the honesty. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Like if if your if your reason for liking this is, I I just kind of like coincidental anime softcore stuff. Yeah. Fine. It's not my thing, but fine. Like that. This is the series for you. But yeah. I I don't I can't imagine this being like oh this is one of the best series that Shonen Jump has dropped. Like we you know for a fact we're a, we're gonna lose Fabricate 100 at some point. The same Don't week that, that New Age Exorcist is going to get its anime <laughs> announcement. Don't say that, man. I can't take that <laughs> shit right now, bro. Come on. <laughs> if Fabricate 100 falls, dude, my average score of every weekly show in a jump manga is plummeting. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> we, the fucking Fabricate 100 army trying to hold the line <laughs> while New Age Exorcist is just like... Guys, guys, go to M Manga Plus and start reading Fabricate on Manga Plus. Please do anything <laughs> you possibly can. <laughs> I need you to start tweeting hashtag Fabricate100, please. Start, please start tweeting, man, this manga is so good with like just a random panel. Just grab any panel, man. It don't matter. <laughs> yeah, I just, man. I, oh. Do you remember Do you remember when I first started reading for, the, for doing this podcast and I tweeted something about how um, this manga is going to live forever? And people were like, that's not going to happen. Can you stop? Yeah, people were giving you shit. You were like, Nui's yeah. Exorcist, I guarantee you, is going to get an anime. It's going to live forever. It's going to be popular. And everyone's yeah. like, there's no way anyone's going to like this. And now look now look at us. Where, where are we now? Yeah. What so... miserable existence are we in <laughs> on a Chapter 10 Beach episode? Yeah, so this proves that my opinions are all objective and everyone should trust them 100%. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I. Uh, it sure is shit that I have to look at every week for this. Yeah. 
It Are sure is one story? of the work <laughs> obligations of all time. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited to talk about it next week, dude. Maybe they'll yeah. go to another beach, you know, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe he'll trip be and accidentally rip someone's skirt off next time instead oh. of grabbing a baby. Oh, boy. Peak I'm fiction. so pumped. Peak fiction. I'm going to just yeah. start going through all of Tenmaku, or not Tenmaku, uh, New Age Exorcist, and start editing those domain expansion jokes into, like, everything. <laughs> like, that's, 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 that's what I'm going to do now. It's just going to be him, like, when he... Uh, when the girl gets upskirt when she's like in the cafeteria and then she turns around and points at him, I'm just going to edit that to say domain expansion. <laughs> It'd be far more palatable. And it will be so, better. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. It'll be better after that. Yo, this manga, throwing some domain expansions, this manga's fire. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last thing on the list is uh, Marshall Master Asumi. So like I said earlier, this was ranked from best to worst, in my opinion, uh, with the exception of Marshall Master, because it's not really far enough in. I don't I don't feel fair to judge it that harshly yet. Uh, can I be honest with you, Zen? Absolutely. I, I think this manga is quite interesting so far. Okay. I can get behind that. I haven't really honestly paid that much attention to it. Um, I, I, I'm too shell-shocked from the fact that Phantom Seer got canceled and New Age Exorcist still exists. Fair uh, enough, fair enough. That I'm so scared. I'm scared, man, to, to read a new thing. So I'm interested. Let's hear what you uh, what you like about um, it so far. So in the in the few chapters that we have, I think it's it's kind of broached the subject of like masculine ideals and like what men should do and what women should do. And through the protagonist's brother, I think it's introduced the concept of like strength based identity. And I'm hoping that it kind of forms a link between that, like the masculine thing, and then strength based identity. Um, <clears throat> And I think the protagonist is, you know, moderately interesting, as, as moderately interesting as you can be, like four or five chapters in. Um, I think, you know, it's not it's not that he's he, he he's not like cowardly. He just doesn't want to fight because he thinks it's kind of pointless. However, as soon as he finds out, like his brother has just been like, because his brother's like a pro, and he's been kind of like beating the shit out of this non-pro in the ring, and his brother's it's kind of a dick about it so the protagonist is getting like pretty pissed off about it and i think it's cool when you can find strength in protecting others even though you don't want to fight so and i think that's like a healthier ideal of masculinity is expressing your strength to protect others okay. so okay. i think it's got cool potential uh it's not that far in though so i don't have too much to say about it that's fair i can get behind that i'll have to catch up yeah. for next week so we can actually talk about it well, I, uh, yeah i have not been on the, on the cusp of it, but it certainly sounds better than New Age Exorcist. So, uh, already, <laughs> well, not, um, I'm hard. there for that. <laughs> yeah, people have, uh, have you been reading Icehead Guild? Because I have not. I sure haven't. <laughs> okay, good. I was really afraid that you would have read it, and I would not have, so. <laughs> no, the only thing I read outside my normal rotation was the uh, Minato one-shot for Naruto. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, I, I didn't know. You should read that if you haven't. Maybe I will. I, I didn't know if we were doing uh we're like we're we're picking up every manga that gets introduced or what we're doing. So uh, we are we are, but at, okay. at, as is tradition, uh <laughs> you, you may recommend a vote for something to be dropped. Uh, we're keeping we, we do Exorcist. live we're on the air it. cancellations, so we're keep we're keeping New Age Exorcist. Okay, that's I it. almost think that we should too because it's too funny, like, man. It's it's funny, yeah. Like that's the only that like it's funny. <laughs> that's the only it's thing I can think to say Air about blows. it. And you know it kind of balances out, like you know, no ma nothing bad that we can say about anything can yeah. be as bad as what we can say about New Age Exorcist. So really, yep. it's, it's important. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking if Mashal wasn't going to end soon, I was honestly wondering if we could vote <laughs> to drop Mashal because, like, <laughs> oh man, there was a period where it was not fun. Yeah, thankfully it did end. Uh, oh, so like... I guess uh, yeah, I guess I should say where I'm at with the other stuff. Um, I'm fifty something chapters into Undead Unlock. Okay. Uh, volume one, second biggest piece of dog shit I've ever read. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, the undead unlock glow up is one of the most historic glow ups in manga yeah. history. Now that I'm into the fifties, it's starting to. I'm just like, I'm kind of settling down. It's it's cool. It's never cool now. never. When you read that first few chapters, the the like, I think mm -hmm. the first like seven or eight chapters where it's just mm -hmm. absolutely horrendous. Mm -hmm. Did you ever think? You would hear someone, me, right now, telling you that it has the best female lead, maybe, in any shonen for the past, like, ten years. <laughs> I would never fucking believe that for a yeah, second. <laughs> not even for a second. Uh, when you get no. there, tr just trust. 
Trust the process. I remember I was actually talking about this in the Shonen and Chill Discord server, which I actually do check regularly, by the way, for people who don't know. Um, uh, I was having a conversation who said with someone who said that it's kind of unfair to j- j- drop the manga because like the first couple of volumes, and I was like, no, I don't think so. I, I think don't that... think so either. I... You don't owe any author your time. Yeah. You know, yeah. like yeah. If you gotta uh, sit there pe- and go through all that, like you don't owe anyone that. People have their own like line for what they can tolerate. Some people have some people can tolerate much more bullshit. I unfortunately am an adult and I cannot tolerate much bullshit like that. Yeah, the, so... the bullshit <laughs> limit is is low. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it's so far over the line that it circles back around to being funny, like <laughs> True. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um. Yeah. If if I wasn't doing Shonen the show, the ways Exorcist wouldn't have made it past like page five. So. <laughs> Welcome to hell. <laughs> the yeah. curse of having to do this. Um, I think it's totally reasonable to drop Undead Unluck first couple volumes. Uh, yeah, very, like very it, rough. Like, yeah, it, it's a, miser- a legitimately miserable beginning. And I don't know what they were thinking doing that, because once you get through that, it never does it again. Yeah, it's really picking up, man. Like, I don't know. It's really it, starting to do some cool it, stuff. At no point does it, like, backslide into that. It's never like, uh-oh, we're doing weird, like, uh, rapey stuff again. <laughs> So I don't know why it started with that. I know a lot of people are like, oh, I bet he did it so he didn't get canceled. Because as we can see with New Age, that shit sells. Um, <laughs> but I, I don't know what what happened. But if you can power through it and you like it, that's fine. But you don't owe that guy or anyone else your time. Like that's still, yeah. It's like I said with Horikoshi. That's still his story and he still wrote yeah. it. So you don't owe him getting through the shitty parts to get to where yeah. it's good. Like. Norm- normalize liking or disliking literally anything you want for any yeah. fucking reason you could possibly think everything of. Everything you like is good and everything you don't like is bad. And Dude, that's all I, that I have. I have to have that conversation in my Discord all the time because people don't grasp it. They're like, I, I hate the phrase of like, oh, I think it's good, I just don't like it. And I'm like, motherfucker, then it's not good. Then it's not good, yeah. My yeah, two <laughs> things that I hate are one, it's objectively good, but I don't like it. Oh, yeah, Shut yeah, up. yeah. Shut yeah. up. And Shut up, two, <laughs> um, the concept of like the the shame behind liking stuff where you have where you're like yeah. i really like this but i admit it's not so shut up yeah shut up just like it with your chest like it with your whole yeah. chest yeah like if the you issue think with one piece is the greatest thing ever created don't tweet at me and be like oh i actually think this is a really good manga but i will admit it's pretty bad at all this stuff shut up man just say you think that shit's fire <laughs> i don't care yeah, Do you? I mean, I like, I got, I got, I got criticisms of ReZero, but if you're watching this podcast, start watching it right now, okay? It's fucking, <laughs> it's, per- it's actually perfect now that I think about it. <laughs> it uh, flawless, yeah. Literally, <laughs> everything I like is good, everything I don't yeah. like is bad. If you don't agree with me, you can say that, but I don't really care. Like, yeah, my, my, my issue with the argument of like, oh, it's good, I just don't like it, is it feels like it's an appeal to objectivity without saying the word objective. Because it feels like it's separating personal enjoyment from objective quality when those I, I, I feel like objective quality doesn't exist. So like, you're just setting up, you're setting it apart for a random reason that it feels like. Yes. And I, I think there's some situations where objective quality can exist. Like, but those, those situations are very technical. Like, mm-hmm. if your art is drawn really shittily and like off frame like then it's bad you know like i can't make an argument for your paneling if your paneling sucks like uh what was that shit aliens area where every page would look like a bookshelf of just fucking panel <laughs> like it was a nightmare and like there there is some point where you're like i can't say anything for this to, to make it like there's nothing i can do to defend this but I think that people, especially, and I'm going to get shit for this, but like Uh-oh. we are, it, it's we're we're in a community on Twitter, especially like because Twitter's where it's the worst. I find like I in like YouTube comments and stuff as toxic and as they're supposedly supposed to be. I never really find people getting like super bent out of shape about shit that other people like. Sometimes there will be responses like, "Oh, that's ass, actually," but like it's not that bad. But no, I feel actually, like yeah, yeah. on like Twitter, especially where people have their name and they're like sort of online identity like attached to the shit that they say they yeah. don't want to have an opinion too far outside of what everyone else thinks is like okay you mm-hmm. know like yeah. uh you see it with the mha stuff a lot where like <laughs> tell me about it dude yeah well yeah i guess if anyone knows it's you <laughs> where it's like they'll you'll, they'll say something and they're like i don't think this is super great but you know, my hero still like i'm you know 
everything has to be i'm stating my opinion but then i'm also sanitizing my opinion so yeah no one gets too i upset with me that i that my opinion is different yeah from theirs i know that um ocean man particularly had to deal with this a lot where people if you don't specify that this is your opinion for some reason people will presuppose objectivity to your opinion and yes i don't know why which is insane because yeah anyone saying anything that is opinionated by default is their opinion right Like, exactly yeah if you don't put IMO in front of whatever you say online, you'll have this subset of people be like, well, that's just what you think. Like, of course it is. That's why I said it with my mouth, with yeah my own words, because yeah it's the shit that I think. But it, and it's weird because you'll have people get upset about you supposedly inserting objectivity into your opinion, and then they will immediately do the same, where it's like, oh, Oh, you just think that it's bad, but actually it's good, and most people think it's good. And it's like, Um, I don't care but that actually, most people think it's good. Villain Hunt sold really well, so... Yeah, like, sh and all right, here's my hot take on this subject. <laughs> okay. Everyone's life experience and view of the world is different, and so if you think something is good, that is a fact for you. And you don't have to justify it to other people that don't agree with you. This shouldn't be a hot take, which is unfortunate. You, you don't have to, like... make other people and I, I think some of it is that people don't like to like things other people don't like which is why like Yeah. when a series gets really big your one piece your jujutsu kaisen demon slayer my hero um Yeah. people react really negatively to negative feedback of those things because they almost view it as like a competition like i i have to like the Yeah. best thing the thing Yeah, that it's i like like the is the series the is the wars. winner you Yeah. know which is Yeah. weird on its own but normalize liking what you like and just liking it and enjoying it with Yeah. your chest without having to convince other people Look. that either one you only like it uh a little and you're still cool because you dislike the things they dislike or like just fuck them who cares If you can be friends if with people who don't like the same comic books you do yeah, like if, it's not that hard if if you are capable of phrasing and explaining why you like something, then that's cool. But you don't have to. Yeah, I, I think a big difference, uh, which I see a lot, is like someone on their own page, you know, or their own online space, wherever that may be, Yeah. saying, I don't like this, Yeah. is not the same thing as going to someone saying, I like this, and replying, actually, that shit sucks. Yeah, Those and are two I think a very lot of, different behaviors. yeah, a lot of people are very deluded into thinking that's what happened. Like, they're, they're like, equivalent. Yeah, that like... Oh, and you know, you always see like, the, oh, well, you said it in a public space. And it's like, but you, being in a public space does not invite everyone around you to be Yeah, an asshole. Like, so, like, I'm, I'm of the opinion that, well, I'm also a public figure, so I guess it's different, but, like, if I'm posting shit on Twitter, I expect people to respond, but also, like, one, you don't have to be a dick about it, and two, like, you also don't have to respond, like, it's yeah, like you're not, yeah, you're and not, I'm like, not morally saying, like, obligated oh, you to do should it. never share your opinion with someone, because I think there Yeah. are certainly ways you can do that. You can say, oh, I love, you know, Jujutsu Kaisen and someone can say oh I kind of thought this last Yeah. arc was a little on the slow side but like I'm still keeping up with it but you know it, it always has to be like a fight like the League Night sucks for everything because every because the MHA and the JJK leagues drop at the same time and it's always got to be a fight like which one had the better we oh we got a clown on the other or like as much as I don't particularly care for Black Clover um I feel bad for those dudes Because they can't even like their own shit in their own lanes Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know, man. without They always get people ratio jumping for in and just, being like, ha ha ha, yeah. look at they like this thing. Aren't I cool? It's like, shut up, you idiot. Let's It's let just them watch bullying, their shit. man. It's so lame. It's so it's so dumb. Just let them like the shit that they like. Like, get Yeah. over it, man. Um, yeah, it is really fucking, like, I really do feel bad for the Black Clover fans. They're just trying to mind their own business in their own space, and, like, why, you, like, why, what are you raining on the parade for? Like, what's the Yeah, point? you don't have to, like, if someone's... It, it, I, I don't feel too bad about, like, One Piece fans getting it because, like, you have the biggest manga in the world, so everyone, like, a lot of people are going to disagree with you inherently. Yeah. But, like, uh, when people tweet the stupid shit, the Gear 5 is actually more iconic than Super Saiyan every week, and, you know, 750 million people have to argue with them about it. It's like, how do you have the energy for that? Why do you care so much? If that guy... You're never going to convince someone else by going to their page and saying, actually... This opinion you have is wrong. I think it sucks. They're never going to be like, oh, you know what? You're right. Yeah. No, I get it now. Yeah. Actually, you're right. Super Saiyan is more iconic than, than Gear 5, Yeah. even though Mm I just made this tweet with my whole chest and argued for five straight days with people about why I think this. Not, you, you've you really convinced me. This is never going Yeah. to <laughs> so happen. like, if some random dude replies to one of my takes, I'm either going to ignore them or it's going to be such a stupid post, I'm going to block them.
if yeah. it's like a mutual or somebody I know, then I'll talk to them because then it's I know it's probably it might be well, it might be worth it. <laughs> yeah, well, like the thing with Twitter that I think some people don't get is that like Twitter is not very serious. It's not a serious place. Yeah. If I want to have like a legitimate discussion with someone about like a very serious issue, which mm -hmm. manga never is, I want to say right now, <laughs> uh, never a very serious issue. But if I want to have a discussion with somebody, I'm really not going to do it in a place with fucking character limits, you know? <laughs> yeah, true. Um, and so, like, when people come up and like, oh, why won't you defend it? I'm like, dude, I'm not here to, de what, do you want me to debate you. What's that mean? <laughs> then die. Like, what do you want me to do, debate you? Yeah. Like, I'm not going to. I don't care what you think, really. And I don't mean that in a mean way. Because I think when people, mm -hmm. I think when I say that, everyone goes, oh, you know, that's shitty. You should, like, you, or you won't debate. You won't listen to people's viewpoints. Like, no. You can say it, but I don't really care. And I don't mean that in a, like a you're a little person or whatever beneath me kind yes. of way, but more of just like, it's not that big of a deal for me to to devote yeah. too much brain power to, you know? Yeah, I enjoy when... Jujutsu Kaisen and some people don't, and I'm not really invested in arguing with you why you should or not. <laughs> you know? I think a lot of people, I think a lot of people don't really fully grasp that we're, well, obviously we're not like fucking celebrities, but you and I are public figures. We can't argue with everyone who wants to argue with us. That would well, be a no, fruitless Well, no, that would path. be endless. Jesus, yes. that would never, that would um, God. And a lot, a lot of people take it really seriously when I block, so people like to characterize me as somebody who blocks anyone who disagrees with me, which one, is not true, and two, if I block you, you're probably just annoying. Yeah, and like, who has the energy funny. for that shit? That's what the black button is for. Yeah. Like, I don't yeah. want to deal with you. <laughs> like, that's what it means. It's funny, it's funny, because I looked at the amount of people I blocked, I've only blocked 150 people, which is actually not that much. It's not no, that many people. Pretty, I think that's less than I have. Yeah, um, I block you if you say something under my tweet and I look at that. And if my first thought is, oh, you're stupid, then yeah, I'm just going to block you. Like, <laughs> Yeah, because like, I don't have time to deal with that. And I don't, you don't owe anyone any explanation. Yeah. So I think when people, when people get blocked, I think what they assume is happening on the other side of the screen is you're fucking, you're beating your desk and you're so mad. And yeah, you're like, raging. oh, you, I did it. I tilted them and they blocked. Yeah, no, it's I, like, I don't have time for you. Like, get it going. It's, it's usually, I see the tweet. I'm like, oh, this is dumb. And then I block them. And then I, I've even done it on stream where like, I'll see a tweet on stream and I'm like, oh, this is a really stupid tweet. Let me hang on. And then I'll click real quick and I'll block them. And I'll just keep Yeah, because who cares? Like at the end of the day, who gives a shit? And part of yeah. it's an age thing. Like. The, the average age of people who are yeah. super worried about, you know, oh, super invested. I mean, okay, I, maybe my Hero Academia is not a good example of that because there are there is that, like, legion of 30-year-old moms who are, like, super <laughs> into Bakugo. They're like, you can't piss them off. Please don't show them this video. I don't want to deal with them. Um, but, like, the average age of people who are probably super angrily invested in, like, the public perception of their favorite fiction media for, for manga is probably not super high. Yeah. A person who's acting like it's life or death that they got blocked on Twitter by someone they do not know and have never spoken to before are probably people that aren't paying their own bills right now. <laughs> like, <laughs> like they, there's shit in life that matters and having to converse with everyone. Like, because yeah. sometimes it, it's my toxic trait, but I will stir up the discourse on Twitter purely because I'm really bored sometimes. Man. I love it. I love it, dude. It's so funny every time you do it. There's some shit that, like, I, I'm just <laughs> bored. Like, I, I have ADHD, and I can't watch movies without doing something else. So a yeah. lot of the time, unless I'm, like, in a movie theater. If I'm in a movie theater, I can. But if I'm, like, watching a, mo like a movie on my TV at home, I need to be doing something else. I'm going to be scrolling through Twitter. So I'll just fucking, I'll poke a hornet's nest, let people get mad, yeah. do a little interaction farming, get bored with it, and then be done. And then someone yeah. will come back to it, like, 12 hours later, like, still trying to pick at me. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> I, I stopped caring the minute after I read what you said. I I've read what you said, I quote tweeted it so that more people would talk about it, and then that, I stopped <laughs> caring about what you said. And yeah. that's just kind of what Twitter should be for, I think. Twitter's like a great place to just vent your, your inner toxicity <laughs> so it doesn't happen anywhere else in your life. Yeah, man, like, I don't know, dude. Like, I I'm 25 years old. Like, I, I don't want to spend my time the like five years I got left on this earth, you know? I don't want to spend that time arguing with people on Twitter all the time. Sometimes yeah, it'll be fun, years. but... yeah. Like, that's important and you know you kind of see like uh vocal pineapple do it a lot too where like everyone will act like he's fucking fuming all the he time he also does just, it like, at work bro yeah he does it he's just bored like I you, gotta, you gotta normalize oh understanding that most people who are engaged in these discussions do not care about it as much as you do yes i've talked to pineapple about this i know for a fact that he does that shit when he's bored at work and he just wants yeah and there's nothing to else to do like, I used to do it a lot more when I, uh, like, I work from home now, so I'm, like, really never bored. 
because yep. I don't have to just sit there. But when I didn't, yep. I would do it a lot more because I just needed to pass the fucking time. <laughs> you got to pass the time somehow, you know? And, like, if yeah. there's nothing on the timeline to read, generate your own shit to read. Yeah, dude, like, that's... when I'm bored of when I'm bored at work, I go to my Discord and I I, I say like, can you guys start fighting about something, please? Like, yeah, I, can you just like, yeah, I need I need to read something. Let, let's create some drama real quick. Yeah, it's see, see the tw the Twitter dichotomy are the creators who are people with jobs and <laughs> the, the people who who engage the discourse who are the children. Yeah, like at some point you have to understand that the discourse just doesn't matter and who yeah. cares and just like let it be just let it go so like because i started as a my hero academia account anytime i tweet about re-zero i get like some of my old mutuals who are like just dunking on it for fun and like it's kind of annoying because like i'm trying to just like talk about the thing i care about but also it's not that it doesn't really matter that much yeah I, it's I never it's, it's never it's truly just, that serious yeah it's never that serious and if if you are reaching the point where it feels like it's that serious to you maybe take a step back like yeah not not to say the touch grass meme, but like, <laughs> yeah. play a game, I, man. I, like, Final Fantasy I, I, yeah. just came out. That shit rules. <laughs> Stop tweeting for a little bit. Go play that. Yeah. I also don't want to make it sound like, because I, I, a lot of people do, I, I don't fully agree with the idea that some people have where all of your interactions online don't matter. I don't agree with that. I do, Like, these are still people interacting with people, and those things still matter. But also, this is fiction, and I think that your theory should be reserved for something that matters. <laughs> Yeah, like, I, I also don't agree that all of your interactions online don't matter, because, yeah. even, like, at the end of the day, that is a human being on the other end of the screen, and, yeah. you know, you should have some yeah. level of, like, fine, but, like, I would take someone in real life also very unseriously if they were, like, getting <laughs> fuming angry that, that would be even crazier, Uraka bro. likes Deku on, on a yeah. page, like, who, what the fuck are you doing? What are you doing? What are you talking about? What are you talking yeah. about? Like, I just can't imagine, like having that much i don't know we're we're so far off topic now we're this is still technically the marshall master yeah like... marshall master's fire dude <laughs> <laughs> i can't believe we were able to to gleam all this subtext from marshall yeah master. it's crazy. crazy this is a 20 <laughs> 20 minute long marshall master segment it might be the longest segment <laughs> other than my hero shit is it really oh, it's, 20 it's minutes? longer than my hero yeah we've been going for, Fuck, for 21 dude. minutes on marshall master. someone's gonna look at the top someone's gonna look at the youtube chapters and be like wow they had a real in-depth discussion about Welcome this five chapter to Shonen show that's all the, the audience is desensitized to it by now <laughs> <laughs> They'll see something they know is not worth 20 minutes of conversation and be like, hmm, this, some Dude, shit this happened ha here. <laughs> this, this happened to me and Ocean Man whenever he got on my stream all the time, too. We would we would start talking about a certain topic. That's what the call would start. And then it would be like 35 minutes later. We're talking about, like, killing My Hero Academia characters with hammers or, like, the state <laughs> of the, the socio-political state of America. <laughs> Oh Jesus! All right. Well, you know what? That's that's a good a place as any. Twenty five yeah, minutes yeah. into the Marshall Master segment, <laughs> uh, obviously the best new new series, the new 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 gen series of uh, yeah, Marshall Master, the best one. Uh, so I think we'll we'll call that an episode. So thank you for joining <laughs> us. Uh, I know the 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 Goblin Nation is very eager to see you get to. Oh, they're f they're fiending for an episode, dude. They are. Dude, they they they've been waiting for it. Uh, yeah. so I'll be eager to say that we should hopefully have this one up, uh, by tomorrow. Not that this is not live, so no one's hearing that but you, but, <laughs> I uh, it, true. yeah, it should be up soon. Just going to get a thumbnail done, which is going to take a minute because I suck. So I'm going to get someone <laughs> else to do it, Fair uh, enough. as is tradition. And then, uh, we'll have it, we'll have it up, done and dusted and we'll be posted. Awesome. All right, everybody. Well, thank you for tuning in. Uh, as always, we got links down below. Those are going to be updated. Uh, we'll have Asaratha's stuff down there uh, instead of Ocean Man's. I'm going to still keep Ocean Man's down there, though, just out of a, you know, I love that guy. I miss, I miss him so much. It's I unreal. I miss him too, man. You know, we're going to... I can't believe he died after he, after he stopped <laughs> Yeah, coming. I know. We, we filmed that last episode, and then he we had a Viking funeral <laughs> where we shot a flaming arrow into his fucking uh, My Hero Academia volumes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but we will see you guys next time. Thank you for tuning in.